following podcast may contain explicit language not suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Good. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, heels, baby faces, diddlers, and a lot of other people out there in the world. Welcome to the first annual Shooties of the Shoot Style Sauna. I am your MC for tonight, uh, the King of Shoot Style Stell, and I am joined by two guests today. Our fourth one is unfortunately not here because it's bad weather here where we live, but I am joined by our producer, Tim. What's up? And returning guest, Matt. Hello. So we have a lot planned. This is mainly going to be an award show. Not a lot of news is going to be talked about. We're going to focus on, we're going to reflect on the year. Lots of good, some bad, but mostly good before we're going to talk about things. And before we start, Sam, happy birthday. Happy birthday to Sam, who is not here today. Happy birthday, Sam. He might, he might be watching right now, um, but, you know, happy birthday to Sam. He is now 22, is it? He is 22. Brian Little's baby boy. Sam is 22. Yep, good on him. So, um, so we're, we should probably get right to the nitty-gritty, and we're going to do the first part of the shooting. We're going to do a lightning round. So think of this as the Category B awards in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. So oh, yeah? we're, we're going to go through a ten different. We're gonna do 10 categories in a couple minutes. We're going to name our picks first from the first ones that come to mind. We're going to do 10 awards. So First that come to mind, don't even think about it. Short, short explanation, straight to the point, good size. Just um, do it. All right, so first one we have is Best Flying Wrestler. I'm going to say Ray Phoenix. Ray Mysterio. Uh, Ricochet. Yeah, Phoenix because he is amazing at springboarding and it's, he's really fun to watch. Ray Mysterio because it's Ray Mysterio and he's very, very fun to watch. Prince Puma. Ricochet. Fair enough. He j- he's good. That's it. Fair enough. Um, next one. Funniest moment slash best wrestling meme. This is an easy one. Bubbly. Little bit of the bubbly. Was the Royal Rumble slip this year? No. 2018. Oh, no. Okay. That was funny, though. Bubbly. Little bit of the bubbly. Yeah, that, that's decisive. And also, Jericho losing his title because of that, because it got stolen. Well, there's nothing else that really needs to be said. Hey, man, if you, Plus, can, if you can make your own wine because of a little bit of the bubbly, that's I'd say, funny. Tim did buy it, too. <laughs> review review coming to the Shoot South Sauna YouTube channel. Yep. Letting you know. Uh, next. Most shocking moment. I'm going to go Finn Balor's heel turn. Uh, I already forgot what I said on this. Kofi to say Kingston it? winning the title. Was that what I said? You said, no, you said Kofi Kingston losing the title. Oh, yeah. Kofi Kingston losing in seven seconds. Oh, yeah. yeah I hated that. But <laughs> it was shocking because Brock was like, uh, you're like, okay, this is going to be a good match. And it's done. Nice. Ten minutes left in the show. Uh, we need to get something out of this. Oh no, he jumped on his back, and it's over. He's done. And everybody knows how I feel about ha- that Brock was having the title. That was bad. <laughs> Don't like it, um, but you know what? I'm fine with it. Next, wrestler to watch in 2020: Luchasaurus. Yeah, Luchasaurus. The Hangman. Sad Cowboy. Woo! Fair enough, dude. I'm telling. I was telling Stell before we started recording. This is the year that Hangman solidifies his gimmick. Uh, Hangman's gonna win a title this year. I can call it. Ooh, I can see like uh, late in the year. I'd say Hangman is going to beat uh, John Moxley. Mm, okay. Okay, that's I'm good. Fine with that's like product full gear then, or cowboy shit, as they're gonna call it. Cowboy shit. They come out of Hangman's cross. Oh yeah. Um, next is best non wrestler. I'm gonna say William Regal. Paul Heyman. Heyman's a good one. CM Punk. He's a non wrestler. That's he fair. He technically counts. Yeah, that counts. He's a non wrestler. Until he makes his return. These to are all. These are all non wrestler. These are all generally good picks. I know. This is this is all solid. Um, best bookers, people who book the shows. Uh, Triple H. Shawn Michaels. Paul Heyman. So we got, oh, yeah, the first, almost the same fucking people. Hey, you ever watch how great NXT UK is? Yeah, you can thank Shawn Michaels for that one. The show doesn't yeah. get enough love. He the owns show it. Does not he get runs it. Love. He books it. Love it. Next, uh, best brawler, Tomohiro Ishii from New Japan. A giant Austrian man that just so happens to be named Walter. Walter. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's a brawler, but all right. I don't. I'm full of energy today. Uh, I love best it. theme song, um, Imperium. Um. Oh, uh, oh, crap. What did I say? I already forgot what I said. Uh... First uh, thing that comes oh, to mind. Re- oh, Riho. Yeah. Schmidt, first one that comes to mind. Best theme song. I forgot what I said. Survivor Series 2019. My opinion. I like that. You know what? Okay, that's, that's, that's not that's different. Opinion, but, you, different. but like Riho, you, dude, it slaps. It's, it's, a, it's good. You, you can, can, you bop can to dance to that. You, you can, can bop to the club for Riho's theme. Let's say, yeah. Uh, next, second to last one. Crowd chant of the year. I'm going for Tyler Bates' uh, chant at you know, UK, UK Take Up a Cardiff. Uh, Tyler Bates, Tyler, Tyler Bates. Na, 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 na. There it is. Schmidt, crowd chant of the year. Mine is the Randall, Randall, Keith. So Randall, the same Randall. thing. It's you know what? That whole chant just got a shooty. Um, unanswered unanswered question of the year. Tim, what is your unanswered question of the year? Uh, why did they give the fiend the title so early? Because they shouldn't have. Schmidt. Why? Do, uh, when will CM Punk return to the ring? Was that already answered on backstage? <laughs> he won't. He already he, answered he that. He says he won't. Uh, my second I mean, choice would be uh, where is John Morrison? 
That's yeah, where's one. John? That, that's actually that's a, a good question. one. Uh, mine is why did Rio push Yuka Sakazaki down to fight her fest? That's fair. That was never explained. <laughs> all right, let's get Just, down to right, the nitty gritty. So let's get to the proper actual shooting. So we're going to take this into we have. So we have the shooties divided into five segments. We have 25 awards to give out because we have other segments planned for today, but they're going to be like the breaks in between. So our first part of the shooties, our first award is most improved. So who wants to, so I guess I'll throw the ball to Tim first. Tim, who is your choice for most improved? All right. So my nominee, most improved, is uh, John Moxley. So he started the year, you know, as Dean Ambrose. He wanted to fight feud with uh, Nia Jax, and geez, that didn't that sound nowhere. That didn't sound great even when you first heard it. And then he went to AEW, and they were like, hey, do uh, do your thing. Uh, and he was IWGP US champ for like four seconds. But now he has a solidified gimmick. He has this cool open challenge. He's a badass dude. Most improved, John Moxley. Schmidt, you're most improved. I gotta say, Bray Wyatt. He started out the year Someone's not being it. used a lot. That's fair. And then The Fiend came, and then he was being used. He won the championship, and he's done a lot since then. All right. Um, I'll go over Eric's pick. So Eric, who is not with us today because we have bad weather, Eric, I believe, picked Eric Rowan for his. <laughs> so he picked Eric Rowan. I don't think he explained why, but I oh. guess I'll... I guess I'll freestyle this one. Eric, I would probably say he guessed it for because his alliance with Daniel Bryan, which came out of left field. I remember when we watched the Rumble Live, we were like, oh, hey, Rowan. We were like, what's up, dude? How you doing? Are you, are, are you lost, buddy? Why are you here? Yeah, I was like, are <laughs> you lost? You're Metallica team, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> I was so – but then they won the SmackDown Tag Team titles, which was kind of cool. didn't last very long, but it was cool. Yeah. And now he carries around a cage on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. What's in the cage? We don't know. Dude, it's, it, you know it's gonna be like a lizard. It's gonna be like nothing. He's Jake. It's Jake gonna be Roberts nothing. Again. No, wait, it's a camera because we've seen the inside of the case. There's a camera in it. Oh no, that's all. It's a yeah. camera. It's just a camera. <laughs> that's funny. So who's uh? Oh, you still have to go. Sorry. Yeah, my pick for most improved is the National Treasure, Nick Aldis, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Ten pounds of gold. So, um, my experience with Nick Aldis, I remember when I first saw him as Magnus in TNA. That was my first exposure. I'm like, this guy's like, all right, he seems pretty new. He's pretty goddamn big. Yeah, he's a big dude. And then I, you know, I stopped watching Impact for until like this year, and I I heard about NWA Power, and I'm like, oh, this show seems cool. I'm like, oh, that's Magnus. That's Nick Aldis now. Oh, huh, this is really good. He's he's a really good talker. He's really freaking good in the ring. He's a big dude. He's in really good shape. Big old boy. And now he has a new stable on Power. He has some more character development now. He's he's just turned heel on Power as well. I think he's doing really well for himself. I think he's a great NWA champion, and I think the sky's the limit for him at this point. He carries himself as a really good champion. He's very professional. He cares a lot about his industry, and, it, and he does it in a very genuine way. And he seems like a genuinely nice guy. So Nick All is for most improved. All right, who's getting this award? So, let's see. Bray Wyatt, I could see, because, you know, he went from being this rambling guy who just had nonsensical promos and would just lose all the time to this extra-dimensional being who... Is who the crowds, yeah. who the fans really like, has these fun segments, the Firefly Fun House, which is like I this, love the Firefly this character Fun depth. House. He has layers to his character. I, yeah, I, 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 I want, would be fine with giving I'm it to really Bray Wyatt. It makes sense for him. Because like Moxley, my thing with Moxley is like he was already a good wrestler. It's just a matter of he went to another company, and so he was able to be more him. So I wouldn't say he's improved. Just the chains are off. Yeah, you know yeah. what? I, I would be fine with giving it to Bray Wyatt. I want to um, give it to all of this, but I, I think comparatively over the four, if I had to choose someone else, I think Bray Wyatt makes the most sense. Yeah. So you know what? Bray Wyatt, most improved. Yeah. Bray Wyatt was the first shooting of the day. All right! You get a golden yeah. towel. Wyndham Rotunda, a what towel. a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. Our next category on this episode is best return. I, no. I'll go first. I'll let you rock we'll, it. Let's go the other way. Let's go the other way around. So Talk. my pick for best return, this was easy. It was Tommaso Ciampa on the October 2nd episode of NXT. So the, the way they shot it was fantastic, where it's... Kyle and Bobby just retained the titles in the ring against the Street Profits. Uh, bye bye, Street Profits from NXT. Um, uh, I think Roddy came down to the celebrate, and then Adam Cole comes out on the ramp, holds up the title, and then Tron goes black. No one will survive, and it's the coolest stare down to end of the night. And uh, meanwhile, on the other channel, it's Tim's pick for best return. Oh, yeah, baby! This happened, this happened the same night, on the, almost the exact same time. My pick, my pick for best return is one, uh, Jake Hager. Uh. Look! And here is my thought process. Tommaso Ciampa, we knew it was going to happen at some point, right? We knew Tommaso Ciampa was going to return. You know who we didn't know was going to show up? Jake Hager. Because he, he he showed up. Everyone was like, I'm sorry? Is that Jack Swagger? No, it isn't. It's Jake Hager. Look, and now and he returned, and now he's a big fucking deal. He's the big hurt. He don't big. talk unless he got to. 
Sorry. I think he made a great. I think he made a great presence. Jake Hager, best he, return. They use him really well, to be fair. But they like, do I, use Jake Hager really well. I can't. I'm curious. Laugh, I'm curious to see how he wrestles now. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a mix of like MMA and like wrestling. I don't think he. I don't think he's had a match yet. MMA, yeah, no, he hasn't had a. I would love for him match. to have a match at Revolution. I, I would love it. I would say Dustin. Yeah, du- and my Dustin, he broke his wrist. I'd say Dustin Hager Revolution. But yeah. anyways, uh, Jake Hager, best return. Uh, Schmidt. Schmitty Ice. Well, then we'll do, um, we'll do Eric. I am going to go with my dad, CM Punk. Oh, hey. It literally, he no one thought field. it was going to happen. It was rumored forever, but no one ever thought it was going to happen. No That's one right. thought CM Punk was going to come back to WWE, because we all know he hates WWE with a burning passion. But then that we heard that theme on that on the show. Backstage? On Backstage. And we knew, and we're all just like, holy crap. And even the people who were in backstage didn't know it was happening. Nobody knew it was happening until it happened. That's fair. Yeah, because like, they have the little documentary about it. He's in the car. It's like, yeah, nobody knows. So, like, <laughs> and just, they kept him like in complete surprise. They had, like, they had him in a Fox office. Like, all right, I'm going to look where everyone's coming from. Exactly. Only, only Renee Young knew. Like, out of all the backstage. Only Renee Young. One and one it was one. ruined by Paige yelling, is this a rib? And I'm like, Paige, I, don't get me wrong. I love Paige, and uh, Paige, uh, uh, hopefully you're not dating anyone and would let me uh, get on a date with you. But um, I was unfortunate. Uh, who did Eric pick? Eric picked Chep as well. I think for the same reasons. Because, like, they went, they also built up with the with the Twitter stuff that Champa posted him doing with the workout videos and looked insane because he looks Dude, ripped. Even though he has a rough case of neck. He looks uh, scary. <laughs> so uh, I'll forfeit my own pick because Jake Hager's not winning this. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, could, I laughed when Jake Hager showed up when I was I, watching that. I think I Stell laughed. laughed at my pick of Jake Hager. No, I did. I, I laughed when Hager showed up on that dynamite. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I was laughing my ass if off. If I had to give it to some uh, – It's Champa. I, I think it's Champa because he's, he's, he's wrestling too, and he's doing really good. I kind of want to give it to Punk just because no one saw it coming. Because he was he did the whole, really like, panelist. I don't like WWE, I don't like WWE. But he's a Fox employee. Does that count? It, I it will, counts. I would allow it. It counts. He's it on a WWE ch- show. How do we, are we flipping a coin for this? What are we doing here? Um, where's my phone? Um, hold on. I was gonna say I have a coin drawer. Right, tails can... is Champa, heads is Punk. All right, rock and roll. All right, hold on. This is this is gonna be it for like a lot of them, aren't we? We're gonna, yeah, fuck... it's gonna be a couple of yeah. these. I'm fine with that though. Hey Google, flip a coin. Oh come on. Come on, tails, baby. What the hell is this? Just flip a coin. It, it took me to a browser page for those oh, who no, can't I, see this. Oh, I got this. Hold on. I'm going to get a coin just in case. Oh, wait. Here we go. And Tails. Dang it. All Champa right. wins. You know what? I'm all right with that. Champa, he deserved The guy's actually wrestling. Yeah, he, uh, he deserves it. He's like, actually wrestling. He, I don't care what you people he say. Lo- he, looks, he looks not bad. He looks he, not bad. He Punk, is, Punk, is, Punk is on every week. He's on, he's on That's sporadically. Fair, but yeah, but like. It's still, cool no that he's there. That coming. All right. Next award. Championship of the year is next. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Schmidt, Schmidt, you first. Wait, wait. I got to find it. Okay. Did you say the wor- hate- You said the worst one I think I've ever heard ever. Everyone's gonna hate me for this. T- for this, it's um. I think it's the twenty four seven championship. Bold. Because because of this reason, because it made SmackDown and Raw kind of interesting again. I only watched SmackDown and Raw for the twenty four seven championship segments at that time because there was nothing else good on. No, that's fine. I mean, it's done now. Yeah, yeah it's done Allegedly. now. It's retired. Uh, Allegedly. Let's go to Eric. Eric, I believe. Also, I think Eric and I have the same pick again. Let me go to Eric. Eric has. I'm going to have to scroll up here. Bow, 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 Eric's ballot bow. has. Oh, he has a tie. Eric selected a tie between the NXT Championship and the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. That's, so his IWGP reasons, Heavyweight title so is. So all Eric's explanation was I'm just, he says, I'm just going to title holders this year. NXT Champions in 2019. Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole. Bay Bay. Um, IWGP <laughs> Heavyweight Champions. Kenny Omega, Roshi Tanahashi. Jay White. All we're right. We're not talking about Jay White. Uh, Kazuchika Okada. So those lineages are pretty good. Also, the match that those titles, those championships have had this year. Um, Okada versus Sonata. Okada versus Osprey in the G1. Okada versus Ibushi in the G1. Okada versus Jericho. All those are pretty good matches. Um, on the NXT side, Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole, the whole series. Johnny Gargano um, versus – and that, he wasn't shaping that happened. Never mind. Scrap that one. Adam Cole versus Jordan Miles. Adam Cole – Versus Finn Balor, Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle, War Daniel Games. Bryan, Dana Bryan, Seth Rollins. That, that was a DQ, but it was still all right. It counts. Yeah, it was still good. Tommaso Ciampa versus Aleister Black. I wasn't very bad. good. Um, DIY in the uh, Dusty Rhodes Classic when Champa was still champion. That's so awesome. very good. Um, that's pretty much what I could say. Um, I also picked the NXT Championship for pretty much those same reasons. It's just it's had a really good year, and all November helped elevate that title even higher than it already was because it is a world championship. 
it is a world championship by WWE uh, rules. So in the whole month of November, it had brought this whole new level, and it's probably the most prestigious title in the company right now. At least I think so. All right, uh, here's your local executive producer about to go insane. Uh, I picked the IWGP United States title, currently held by one Lance Archer, even the fuck Lance Archer. Um, oh, <laughs> look, it just, it looks great. It's a beautiful title, to be I fair. I mean, John Moxley, it makes, it's like the one United States title that actually is meaningful. Uh, the WWE United States title, no one gives a shit about. Sorry, right. Uh, sorry. It, now, it, when I was if I draw it. It needs a remake. Um, Wait, what if Andrade brings in the South American Championship? Like a certain Look, I'm just did? saying I'm the best booker. Uh, we could have added that to this, but you know what? I'll talk about uh, my STU stuff later. But yeah, Good IWGP episode. US title. Boom. All right, so who's, all right, who do we think should win this one? I'm just give it to the NXT. NXT Championship. Yeah, it makes most sense. NXT I'll Championship had it. a very good year. NXT IWGP, Championship. IWGP is probably second place. I will, I will IWGP second place. I will concede NXT will, Championship Championship of the Year. Yeah, yep. that gets that gets a gold, golden towel on top of the gold. Oh, yeah. Um, number four in this first segment, best weekly wrestling show. Uh, I'll um, let Eric go first. Eric, I believe. Let's go, let's go back to Eric's ballot because he's not here. Uh, let's go to the man, the myth, the legend, Eric. Very much in spirit. Oh, maybe he's watching right now. We maybe don't know. he's watching. We don't know. But Eric, we love you anyway. And uh, uh, where Byron are Tom. you? Eric picked NXT. Yeah, this is an easy one. NXT had a full year to actually work with him, like some other shows on YouTube and TV. Oh yeah. Um, it's brought us some of the best TV wrestling matches, I'd say, and a lot of good segments. Uh, just been consistently good. And someone, I think Ross pointed this out on the Cultaholic um, Awards. Uh, NXT is what AEW market itself to be. Yeah. Nailed it. Yep. So I kind of agree with that. My only thing of NXT is I wish, I wish they did more promos. Like right now, it's very match, 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 match focused. Match. That's like, but that's not a bad thing. It's just like a very nitpicky thing. And when they do promos, it feels very special. It's not horrible. Right. And they do a lot of those vignettes anyway for other people. So I think, yeah, I've also picked NXT for pretty much the same reasons. I think it's just this is the best weekly show. It's my favorite show to watch week by week, and it puts on the best pay-per-views consistently of the year. So, yeah, my pick is also NXT. Uh, NXT, because NXT is NXT. Yep. Uh, I Schmidt. Ra- just kidding, NXT. Thank you. <laughs> Ross, right. Ross, not, Ross not the worst. <laughs> Woo! Ross not bad. NXT, Forward across the clean board. sweep. Clean no sweep. Doubt. NXT, you're great. Uh, put on good stuff in 2020, or we will riot. Uh, the final... Uh, the award for the first half, or well, the first part, part of the second of the shooties, is the breakout star of the year. Tim, you go first. I gotta look through my list. It's right here. Uh, I would like to tell the uh, the listeners watching at home. Uh, don't you forget about Keith. Uh, Keith Lee, breakout star of the year. Look, he went from not being booked at all. They were trying to be like, oh, put Keith Lee in a tag team with uh, ACH, and look how that ended up. Yeah, and then nope. put him with Matt Riddle, and look how that ended up. It went okay. And then they started booking him well, and then Survivor Series happened, and they were like, holy crap, that's Keith Lee. Big dog He's him enormous. Over. He can jump over people, uh, and Vince loves him, and it takes a lot for Vince to love people, especially people like Keith. Um, and then uh, there you go. Uh, so Keith Lee, and that was a big deal. Better got started the year. Don't you forget about Keith. Schmidt. Schmidt, I pick. picked Keith pretty much for the same reasons. Keith. Uh, Eric, let's see. Eric picked. Go on, Eric. Eric, he, uh, that's, that's me. That's you. Uh, we scroll up. It's number nine. <sighs> Damn, Eric, why couldn't you be here? You had all... Eric picked Walter, which Eric explained. 2019 was the year of Walter from his debut at TakeOver Blackpool in January to winning the UK title and ending Pete Dunne's historic reign at TakeOver New York to putting on an instant classic with Tyler Bate at Cardiff. He had a very good year. Despite what happened at Survivor Series, which we don't want to talk about. That, we don't talk it, about that. That was stupid. It was dumb. It was bad. We don't like it. Crowd hated it. Um, 2019 was just a really good year for him. I'm going to disagree with that. I think he was already doing well for himself the past two years on the Woo! Indies. As much as I'd like Woo. to give the award to him. It's not that one right now. The first so, Steam Dream pay-per-view. Stell versus Eric. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My breakout star of the year is the new NXT Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. Um, so oh, Rhea Ripley started the year as the NXT UK Women's Champion. She, I think, won it like on tape delay in November. She was pretty new to people. They saw her in the main classic. She had some good showings. Didn't win, but I remember her match with Io Shirai was pretty good. Um, then she faced Tony Storm at Blackpool, lost the title, and then she was kind of foiling in the mid card of NXT UK for a while. She lost the fight for Niven, beat her at Takeover Cardiff on the pre-show basically, and then went to NXT US and 
pretty much got the better of Shayna Baszler at every turn. She's had good performance after good performance. Her celebration at the final NXT of the year was a very feel-good moment. Okay. It showed how big of a deal Shayna losing that title was, and I think she is going to be a future face of that women's division, like of the whole company. Also, she's 23 years old. She is 23 years old. And yeah. that's scary good. And that's scary good. Yeah, that's she's very, very good in the ring. Very One of the best talkers in the whole company. Probably all of women's wrestling, let's be real. She's one of the best talkers. She's pretty yeah. damn good. All right, so, uh, let's yeah. deliberate this. I'm, uh, st- I'm sticking with Rhea because I think she had an, an, a good year on the whole. My flip in the coin between Keith uh, and Rhea Ripley. Or are we just going to agree that don't you forget about Keith? I'm right here. I got the coin. I got it. Um, you- okay, heads, Ripley, tails, Lee. Oh, yeah. What was heads? Ripley. Damn it. Ripley gets a golden <laughs> that's towel. That's annoying. Speaking All of right. that's, a, hey, that's a segue. All right. So, actually, a segue, since that's the end of the first half, we have a superstar of the week. And what do you think? Because she won the title, Rhea Ripley is our superstar of the week. Did we already – did we already – uh? Put her as last week's or am I or the last one or am I having a a, a, a Keithley strong? won the last one. That, okay, yeah. Keithley won the and last that's one. That's fair. All right. Yeah, Rhea Ripley wins. Uh, first for everything we just explained, new new champion. Not much else really happened during like the past two weeks of wrestling because it's the holidays. And yeah, couldn't be anybody else. And um, we hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. Yeah, I know we good. did. I know we did. You did. How was your holiday, Tim? You know, it wasn't too bad. Hanukkah and Christmas together oh, was a uh, was a great time. That's just kind of, you know what? I'm glad I got to. I drove down to see my family. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to 2020. Uh, Stel, how was your holiday? It was very good. Oh, uh, yeah. So I pretty much, my, since I'm, I'm not Jewish, so I don't celebrate Hanukkah. Woo! So, um, <laughs> it was just Christmas on my end. So my Christmas, I involved getting a PlayStation 4 Pro, which was very good. That was Love for my those. dad. Love Got that. seven games for my dad and a copper color controller. Love that. All for my dad. My mom gave me a $100 gift card and alongside like a box of whiskey. We love that. I, I we that love at, boxes I, of whiskey. It was Jack Daniels. I left it at home, so it's not <sighs> with me. It, it's good for New Year's, at least. I and love then that. some. Um, then my grandmother, she gave me a $200 in cash. Some other good stuff. Cash yeah, money. And then she also surprised me with a gift of a Dell 2018 laptop. Damn. All right. That's a big Bring surprise. in this gold. And Schmidt, how about you? Schmidt Ice. I was, had a very good Christmas because, again, I don't celebrate Hanukkah. Go Hanukkah, baby! But um, I got a Calgary Flame sweatshirt, which I was Ooh. very, very happy about oh, because yeah. I love the Calgary Flames with a lot. They are my favorite hockey team, and I got them for I got a sweatshirt for them, and I had no merch beforehand. I love that. Um, I got Jedi Fallen Order, which is I've already completed it. Really, really good is it? game. I'm it's about playing really, it. really good game. Shit, right. um, I dig it. I dig it. And I got a bunch of socks and shirts, and I got two new flannels. Oh so. shit! All right, I didn't know we were talking about what we got. All right. Uh, I mean, we might as well take it. You know what? You know what? Taking a break from the shooties. You know what? I'll so. keep myself to myself because you know what. Who really cares? <laughs> <laughs> who does care? Although, uh, uh, shout out to, uh, shout out to uh, I forgot who did this, uh, for sending me the Death Stranding PS4 Pro, which came in right before we started recording. Uh, I forget your name off the top of my head, but you rock. Who are you? All right, so getting back to the award show after the brief break, uh, we have part two. So the first um, award for segment two of the shooties is Best Gimmick. We'll throw it off to Tim first for his choice for Best Gimmick. Uh, I'm going to try and do this uh, in the style of the person that I nominated for Best Gimmick. Um, so bear with me for a second. <clears throat> Orange. Nice. All right, that's it. Okay, yeah. Orange, Orange Cassidy. Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Um, yeah, fair enough. That's uh, it. <laughs> it's just he's probably one of the most over people when you watch Dynamite. It's so great. So uh, my favorite moment from, like, from like Dynamite so far, well, for him, is when they're – I think it was – LA, well, not LAX, Santana Ortiz in the back finding the Bucks, and then one, I think it was Ortiz kicked the door open in the bathroom, and, door, and there's Orange Cassidy, hands in his pockets, gets like leaning against the bathroom wall, he's just like, and he just closes yeah. the door again, like uh, really slowly. Uh, when he shows up on the ladder under the ring was funny. That was on Dark, um, right? Yep. Uh, his debut at All Out when he was with the best friends, where he's just like, I'm here now. Takes out the Dark Order. Uh, anytime he does a suicide dive with his hands in his pockets, looks great as shit. Sunglasses stay on, too. Sunglasses stay on. Uh, any of his kip-ups with his sunglasses on, just fun as fuck. All right. There's a lot of practice. But yeah, uh, orange. Why? Because. Orange. That's it. Freshly Schmidt. squeezed. Yeah, Schmidt, who'd you pick? I picked The Fiend. I like because it. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Someone's got to say it. It literally, when he debuted, he had Bray Wyatt's thing as a lan- skull as a lantern. Which and is, I was oh, just yeah, that's like, right. Super I, cool. I saw that's that, and I was watching, I was watching with these two, and I was just like, holy crap. That's scary. It's cool as balls. That's spooky. awesome. Big spooky. spooky. Big spookies. Uh, let's see what Eric picked. Eric. Eric. You are Eric. He also picked the feed. Probably for the same. He hasn't wrote why, but I'm pretty sure it's for the same reasons. 
checked out. Yeah. Check? And my pick for best gimmick was Jurassic Express. I dig it. Yeah. Jurassic yeah. Express yeah. because their vignette, um, their they're, it's a ri- you don't see a lot of characters like that in wrestling anymore, aside from like the Fiend and like the occasional like your Velveteen Dreams and the Question Mark and Aaron Stevens. Um, but you know, it's a very I don't think I've ever seen this kind of gimmick before, like a dinosaur. Like, well, we, we had the Funkasaurus, Brodus Clay. We don't talk we about don't Brodus talk Clay. About he's on backstage now. That's all. I'm Is he? About. Yes. I didn't know that. I was gonna say he's uh, I, uh, he goes by his other wrestling. Tyrus. Name. Tyrus. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But um, he's on, he's on oh, backstage. But like this, this could, Tyrus. But an actual dinosaur. That has a master's degree. It just so happens to have a master's he degree. He also he does flips. He does powerhouse stuff. He has like a he's really good at talking. He is he's about, funny. He's about as ripped as insert ripped thing. He's scary strong. And he also has Jungle Boy, who is who has a character he's Tarzan basically, which is which is funny. He, he's pretty good. He's very athletic, very fun to watch. And he got Baby Saurus, Marco Stunt. R- Baby Saurus. Luke, Luke. I hate how he flosses, yeah. but other than Luke that, Perry. I like him. Rest in peace, Jungle Boy is dead. Luke Perry. Luke Perry. Ah, yeah. Luke Perry. Jungle Jack. Chalk one up to the game. Jungle Jack, as JR likes to say. <sighs> Jungle Jack. Jungle Jack Perry. Yeah, um, Jurassic I, Express, they're super funny. They're super fun to watch. I love Luchasaurus. Uh, this is true. But I think if we all deliberate, I think we should give it to The Fiend because it made Bray Wyatt relevant, even though he wasn't before. Now he kind of is. Well, he's Universal Champion. <laughs> So and, that's fair, and he's Mister Rogers outside of the fiend. He is Mister Rogers. I love that. I hope he's that so happy. I love his. his he's a list. happy man. He knows great acting. Wind Rotunda, just good dude. I really hope he's a he's a two time winner. If Liv Morgan returns, it's on. No, that. Yep. Nope, she's on Raw. You need to realize that. That's she's un- Emelina now. It's unfortunate. I'm sad. It's Liv- a stu- It's a stu- I'm gonna realize it's a stupid idea. Liv, Liv it, Morgan's it, gonna be what Ray Wyatt doesn't need it. I think Liv Morgan is gonna be what Lana was supposed to be, and that funny. she's gonna be just hot, but good. Yeah, Lana is not. Lana is bad. Now. But yeah, uh, what happened to Lana? Lana? Best gimmick, um, the fiend. Congrats, you get a towel. She let them two time winner. Her with he's, a, Lash. he's a two time winner. Bray Wyatt. He's won two. And they awards ran now. that angle by Rusev, and Rusev was like, "That's okay." Yeah, I don't know why. Hey man, I'll let my man do his thing. That's uh, that's cool with me. I'll let Rusev do his thing, but what the hell? Uh, next on the awards is best debut. Uh, Stell, start us off. John Moxley, double or nothing. You kidding me? That, the way that show ended, how could you go out any other way than having the former Dean Ambrose, who just left WWE, like, weeks before that, show up with a cryptic message on May 1st of that video he posted, and then not be quiet for the rest of the month, and then as Chris Jericho was cutting a promo to end on the and talk about how he beat Kenny Omega, you see the camera pants of the crowd, and John Moxley's walking down, and the crowd's losing their mind, and then he kills, he kills the ref, he fucking gives Jericho a dirty deed, it's now the paradigm shift, and then he takes Kenny Omega up the stage, throws him off, throws him off the stack of chips onto, like, part of the stage, and he gives that amazing visual of him on top of the chain, uh, uh, on top of the chips, chips. very accomplished and proud of what he does. Now, look, that's a great debut, but still, let me, let me raise you one here, so, so picture this, I hope you're picturing this with me. So imagine this is NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, one, of course, two, coming two's up coming, Two's almost here. Imagine you just saw Pete Dunn beat Joe Coffey, right? He, he retained his title. And then the lights go out. And then you see a silhouette of a giant human that just so happens to be named Walter, may I add. A big dude in the UK Indies. He comes down. He stares down the bruiser weight. And the entire UK crowd is just losing their mind because they're like, holy shit, uh, that is Walter, who his chops sound like gunshots. Uh, and More then he later. kicked Joe Coffey in his teeth. Yeah, that's it. That's long-term storytelling because they, they have a match in all Blackpool. Yep. Uh, best debut, uh, Walter. He's big. Let's well, not go out for the record. Uh, Eric, what do we got? Eric, I think also picked Walter. I think he had... Eric. Let's see. Oh, what number is this one? Oh, it's in there. Uh, uh, best uh, debut. Best debut is number nineteen. He also picked Walter. Did not write why though. Yeah, it's probably because I'm right. Uh, Schmidt. I picked Walter. It's three against one. Reasons. All right. It's three against three one. against one. Stell, you're wrong. Uh, best debut, Walter. Big boy. Because I wanted it. You know what? Hey, it he happens. Too good that but, uh, Walter, you get a towel, even though you will probably wipe, use that towel to wipe up Joe Coffey's blood from his chest. <laughs> who knows? Who cares? But we all know it's true. Let's be real. Let's yeah. be real. What do we got? Next is most underrated. Oh, yeah. Schmidt, you first. Schmidt, baby. Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> you know it. Oh, uh, why? <laughs> because he was a tag team championship this year. Yes, but he was not used at all. Now he runs a toy show on the WWE friggin' YouTube channel, and he is not used at all, and I don't like it. 
he was never going to be used. Uh, we'll go. Still, uh, we'll he actually go. won a championship at least. He won a mania. She won a championship at least. That's all that matters. Uh, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, a big kicky boy that's not named Alistair Black, but uh, Buddy Murphy looks like him. Looks like him. Buddy Murphy about to get a huge heel push. Uh, Buddy Murphy, he's fantastic best in the kept ring. Secret. Um, best kept secret. He will still be the best kept secret, but he just he's great in the ring. They're just not using him right, and right now I think Paul wants to use him. Uh, most underrated, Buddy Murph. Buddy most Murph. underrated for me is Alistair Black. Because I think Buddy Alistair Murphy. Black is very similar to both the guys you mentioned. He had a good start to the year at NXT. Had that great match with Champa at Phoenix. And also had that tag match at New York, which was fantastic. Great match. Very uh, good match. One of my favorite matches Ricochet, this year. Ricochet almost died in that match. Unpopular opinion. One of my favorite matches this year was that tag match. It's War it's Machine it. versus Ricochet and Black is amazing. It's actually really underrated, I think. That match, no, I, no will, one's really talking about it. I will rewatch that match at the end of Ricochet time. Ricochet dying maybe it was scary, but he Big was scares. fine. Big scares. But he's also really good at selling. But Alistair Black, you know, he was doing well for himself. Then he got brought to SmackDown. He got put in this room gimmick where he just wants people to pick a fight with him. He had a match with Cesaro, which was good. Great match. Great but match. that was that was pretty much it. And then he got drafted to Raw. Now he's actually showing up. So he's, start, he's starting to get somewhere. But this is a guy who is a future WWE champion. And he's like the second coming of Taker, especially when he was NXT. Except he can kick people. He can kick people really hard. And it's scary. And very fast. Very fast. Black Mass is a cool finisher. It's like, Ko- it's like Kota Ibushi, but emo. Very, very much. Yeah. Very emo. Emo Kota Ibushi equals Alistair Buck. And uh, what about Eric? Eric picks Shinsuke Nakamura. Very f- Eric is uh, not allowed in this conversation for right now. What? He, what? I'm not putting Shinsuke Nakamura underrated. He's, he's IC champion, at least. But he doesn't he has really do anything. He's not doing anything right now. Which, I mean, that's fair, though. And look. It's fair. I he was. Will he win this? Probably not. We all have different picks here. He was all... All right, let's nail it down to two, and we'll flip this coin. Alistair Black and Buddy Murphy are probably the best picks here. I'm sticking with Zach. But like compared Matt, to like, you're not in this conversation. <laughs> uh, all right, what tails, you, tails black. Tails black. I can do that. Alistair Black. God damn it. Yes. All right, that's fine. Alistair Black. He's you get a, a towel. He's having a big game. And he can him. use his towel uh, to wipe off his foot because he's been kicking people. He's gonna kick Buddy Murphy's head off at some point. Look, I love Buddy Murphy. I think he deserves everything. Okay, next up on the list is the best wrestling YouTube personality. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, Schmidt, you first. Uh, Simon Miller. So he, I was a good pick. He hosts up ups and downs. He hosts a lot of stuff in one culture, and he is also the host of Kayfabe News. Sh- uh, Schmidt, which is funny. Uh, Schmidt, you didn't uh, start with the very obvious choice of uh, why. Here's why, and for that, I'm very mad at you. Why? Why? Here's why. Uh, uh, we'll go to Sam, you next. Oh, oh, me next. All right. Uh, wrestling with regret. Brian Zane. Look, I. It's this year is when I first started watching him. Because before, I never watched him because he just seemed boring. But now that I started watching him, he's, su- he's super interesting. Thanks, Del. Uh He's super interesting. He has a very like analytical approach. And when he's funny, it is cringy at times. But, but I it's think he funny. knows. Uh, Brian, Sh- Brian, bleh, God damn. Brian Zane, uh, let me on your show. That's it. We'd love to have you here, but you're also in Nevada. Right? You're also in very far away. You're very West Coast. Uh, so thank you. But uh, let me on your show. Uh, so I'll go next. My pick is Ross Fidel of Cultaholic because... WTF moments are probably some of the best things that Cultaholic makes. Ross and the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast is also very serious, but also really funny at the same time. He also does other fun videos, such as like news videos. He does the occasional one. He has, of course, the podcast. I think he's just overall an entertaining guy, but when he's serious, he also makes very good cases. And I think if Ross has it all. He's funny. He's funny. He is very over the top compared to Brian Zane. But I think, he, obviously, he's aware of that. And Ross is also someone who changes like his approach because he used to be a king. Now, he's very much not a king, and he does a very good job of that. And he makes a lot of good memes. Like about, good. Shane, like about Shane McMahon and Colonel McSweaty Bollocks. I don't know how you can like do no wrong with that. And all the other segments called, like, John O'Clock when that was a thing. All the commentator segments he makes fun of. I love it, Michael! But he makes fun of everybody else. His con- he pays attention to continuity in wrestling, too. He questions a lot of the dumb things we see on TV. You know, of course, he doesn't like doing it, but it's, it's his job. He's just really good at it, and he's funny. It's pretty damn Vince funny. Mc so Ross Twiddell. Big sweaty man. That too. That, that was, that's a long time ago now. Man. Uh, Eric also picked Ross pretty much for the same reasons because he didn't write anything down. So we got two Rosses, a Brian Zane, and this is these are all really good. Uh, this, this is all really I, good. I would I would concede the King Ross. I would yeah, allow, I, think, I would. I would allow it. I love I love both the guy. I love Simon a lot, but let's be real. What culture blows? I I do agree. What culture blows? What culture blows? But kayfabe news. What, kayfabe what, what culture good. gaming? Great. This isn't gaming, but I I will, jump is also I will concede to King Ross. I'll concede. Yes, I'll allow it. I'm mad about it. Ross, WTF Brian Zane, another year. 
you know what? If you do better this year, if you come on the show, then definitely. If you come on the show, I'll give you anything you want. Um, the final part for part two of the shooties is the tag team of the year. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go first, and it's the best tag team in the universe. The Lucha Brothers. Ooh. Lucha Brothers, weren't, what, okay, where didn't they work this year? They worked for what? They worked, AAA, uh, they started Impact, AAA, Impact AW. they were PWG, MLW, AW. and AEW. They were all over the world this year, and they won championship. I'm pretty sure almost everybody went as talking from AEW because they lost to SCU, and that was dumb. Gotta be real. No, they dumb. also have some of the best tag team wrestling matches. Uh, Bucks of Double or Nothing, All Out. Um, they're always they're usually highlighted on almost every Dynamite they're on. Their pair of Pentagon is one of the most charismatic men uh, they have. Their, also in, their impact match against LAX was great. Yep, at Rebellion. Yep. Very good match. And also Scary Bump at the end. Scary Bumps. Ray Phoenix is one of the best springboards, as I said earlier. But they're just really fun. They're charismatic. They're good. They're, I think they're the best tag team in the, in the whole world. Uh, Schmidt, you next. I'm going to go with the New Day. All right, good pick. Because Biggie is like one of the one of the best people on there. And Kofi Kingston, he won the championship he, this year. Which did a lot of things for his career. It made him. It made people think he was serious, and I was very happy about that. Even though Xavier Woods is like super dead right yeah. now. Yeah, Z- Xavier Woods is on injury. Good time to put him, good, good to put him in tag team instead of stable. Big yeah. old injury. Uh, Tim. Look, I'm gonna keep it real simple. Uh, War Machine. Why? They kick ass. That's it. They're still in NXT. They probably win this. Hey, look. I, they, they, rarely they had a weird lose. start. They had a really. They weird start. rarely lose. Uh, That's but, true. They, uh, they, they, book, kick... they book what? They are booked well, but the crowd is like. Eh? The crowd doesn't care because the main roster crowds are dumb, they're stupid, and I hate them. They're dummy. Yeah. Uh, Eric has picked the Gorillas of Destiny from New Japan. That's fine. Which is, yeah. I mean, he's, he, has, he has stuff written down. So he, um, Eric writes, can anyone else name a more dominant team than G.O.D.? No. That's fair. Despite losing the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Titles to Evil Snod at Wrestle Kingdom, Tamatonga and Tongalo regain the titles a month later. So, yeah, didn't matter. Um, oh, they wanted to see, they had the so MSG, they, were, they won the ROH Tag Titles as well, beating Evil Sonata, the Briscoes, and Bill Enterprises. And they are the Bull Club OGs. They are the top tag team in the world. That's not, so they are a very strongly good tag reasoning. team. Good um, reasoning. They, they did have a very good year. So If I had to nail it down to I think two, it's Lucha Brothers. I think it's Lucha Brothers or G.O.D. If it's I had to nail it down to one of the two, because they're both very, very Sorry, good. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, Kyle and Bobby as well. I would have put them, but they're, they're, they're in a different category at this point. Yeah. And the New Day. Be an honorable mention, though. They can, they can be. be there are a lot. There are a lot. I have honorable mentions. All right. Down my uh, notes. Stel, what do you want for Lucha Brothers? Uh, Tales. Tales, Lucha Brothers. Oh yeah. God. God win. God tag uh, team of the year. I'll allow that. Eric, Eric gets a win here. Eric does get a win. You know what? God, they're great. I am excited to see them at Wrestle Kingdom. They're gonna destroy they Finn Juice. <laughs> they will absolutely murder. Speaking Juice of Wrestle Kingdom, let's start our predictions, baby. Let's go to night one of Wrestle Kingdom predictions as we take a break from the shooting. All right, uh, I will be your master of ceremonies yeah, for you, your predictions. I will not pass the MC baton to Tim. Thank you. Uh, so I will run down night one. Uh, we'll give a very quick explanation as to why. So first, in a dark match, the Stardom Special. I'm glad Stardom is represented. I'm gonna mess match. up these names, so who cares? Um, we have Mayu Iwatani and Arisa Hoshiki, I think, and against Julia and Hanakimura. Stell, uh, starts off, baby. Team Mayu, because that's a champion, and this is like a Stardom Showcase match, so I'm going to go for the team with the champion on it. Uh, Makes sense. Eric, I think I just gave him one of them, so I really don't care. Uh, cool, cool. Schmidt. What did I choose for this one? Again? I pull my prediction. Oh, pull yeah. up, pull up, uh, pull up the sheet. I need, yeah, yeah, I, need the I also forgot. I'm gonna forget uh, like a lot of what I picked. Uh, I know time. I picked uh, Team Julia and uh, Hana Kimura because I don't know Stardom, so I just took. Uh, I just flipped the coin on this one, honestly. So some, some, some of these are coin flips. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Schmidt, you pick Team, pick Team Maya, so Team Champion. Yeah, Team Champion. All, All right. right, makes the most sense. I don't know them, so I. Look, that's fair. None of us watch New Japan, I think, besides Eric. So this should be. And interesting. I'm starting to more, but All I'm very right. late to the party. On the pre-show, we got an eight-man tag. We got Great Bash heel, uh, Yuya Uemura and Yoda Tsuji versus Toei Hinare, Alex Coughlin, Clark Connors, Carl Fredericks. I think I'm the only one that didn't pick Great Bash heel. No, Sam did too. Sam also picked Team everyone Hinare. Picked, everyone picked Great Bash heel because that's a proper team. That's literally my reasoning. They're a proper team. Yeah. They, that, they have a name. You know what? If I'm wrong, I'll be like, all right, I'll eat that L. Uh, also, uh, no punishment for Wrestle Kingdom because there's 20 matches and you're insane. Yeah, if you, if, the reward is yet. If to someone be de- perfects this. Jesus Christ. Uh, yet to be determined, but reward ideas I've had are uh, custom gaming controller, uh, tickets to a wrestling event, um, or if one of our sponsors tosses us so, stuff. I hope Switchblade actually wins a couple. You're things. insane. You're wrong, <laughs> but we'll get to you later. <laughs> we'll get to you later. Next. <laughs> also on the pre-show, the pre-show, we have Ten Cozy versus Yushi Nagata and Manabu Nakanishi. Uh, I picked Ten Cozy. I also picked Tenko, as I believe. 
Yeah, I did because yeah. again, proper tag team. Proper, ta- name. proper tag team. So I can't uh, really go Scott picked Naganika. That's what I called it. Um, he's the one guy that picked it. Yep, yeah, he's the one, one guy. guy. And uh, let's go to the main show. Which we don't know what's going to open, but we're just going to It's a ton of eight man tags. Yes, yeah, we got part. Yushin Thunder Liger, Tatsumi Fujinami, WWE Hall of Famer, by the way. He is. Yes, he is. The Great Sasuke and Tiger Mask yes, versus Naoki Sano, Shinjiro Otani, Tatsu Taikawa, and the coach, Ryusuke Taguchi. Uh, Team Liger, because T- Liger needs at least one win on this weekend. Team Liger, because Team Liger. He's not going to be at risk of him again. Team Liger, because. Again, Team Liger. Oh, yeah. yeah. Eric also has Team Liger. I think so we all picked Team Liger. Everyone, everyone, this, is, this is the one big agreement. Like, one of the big, all, we all agree. It's one of them. Go yeah, us, baby. All right. Um, next is another eight-man tag. It's a one of the uh, one of the two uh, stable eight-man tags. So, LIJ, which is Evil, Sonata, Shingo Takage, and Bushi versus Suzuki Gun, which is Minoru Suzuki, Taichi, Zack Sabre Jr., and El Desperado. I've got Suzuki Gun. I picked LIJ because uh, Shingo Takagi. Um, yeah, my main reason is because I, I think because we have Sonata going against Zack Sabre Jr. on night two. So I think Suzuki Gun will get the win. And I think Zack Sabre Jr. might pin one of the stable mates of Sonata to get in his head a little bit. But then Sonata will win on night two. We'll get there. Uh, LIJ. Shingo Takagi exists. Fair enough. That's, That's good. it. And Schmidt, I think you picked. Let's see who Schmidt had. Suzuki Schmidt Gun. Schmidt had Suzuki yep. Gun as well. Yep. So this one, this is actually a pretty split one. So I think we have two LIJs and the rest of Suzuki Gun. <sighs> Eric has LIJ. You know what? Me and Eric will get this right. All right. And the other stable one, Chaos, which is Haruki Goto, Tomohiro Ishii, the Stone Pitbull. Love that man. Toru Yano and Yoshihashi against Bullet Club, Bad Luck Fale, Chase Owens, Kenta, and Yujiro Takahashi. So I'm the one that picked Chaos. I am the one guy who picked Chaos. Uh, do you have a reason besides the Stone Pitbull? Um, that and also because I think, let's see, who's in this match? Oh, Goto. Yeah. So Goto and Kenta have a match at night, too. So I think Goto. I was gonna say Goto and Kenta. Goto could use some heat going into that match. He could. So I can see Goto, uh, Goto getting the win for his team. And Bullet Kenta Club. Him. I think uh, Kenta will get the win for it. I think Bullet Club's in, a, in for a bad night one, but a, but a good night too. Bullet Club. All right. Everyone else picked Bullet Club, I think. Yeah, it's everyone against me in that one. All right. Let's start the title matches for night one. So for the IWGP Tag Team Titles, the Grills of Destiny will defend against Juice Robinson and David Finley. Um, I think uh, Schmidt is dumb. You're, you're the one for it to fit Finn and... Oh, my God. Finn Do you have a here. reason for Juice Robinson and David Finley? They, Juice he's has a match a for the next night. It's, yeah. It Juice, Juice has a U.S. title match for the next night, which he's probably going to win. Yeah, that's fair. So um, it, it's also a friendly good attack team against if G.O.D. I, what, what, what will you do if I get this right, though? Nothing. You get a point. You get yeah. a point. Nothing. Screw you. Out, out of 20 matches. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, <laughs> out of 20 matches. I think the best tag team of the year will retain. Uh, yeah. It was Dusty. With their, with their golden towel to come out with. They'll come out with the, if they come out with a golden towel. First of all, that's awesome. But second, nice. Uh, Texas Death Match for the IWGP United States Championship. Lance Archer will defend against one Jonathan Q Moxley. Uh, Moxley. I think we all said we John all Moxley. Did. Yeah, we, we all, all said, said because Moxley. Lance Archer only won because of a typhoon. It's fuck Lance. Literally, Archer. Yeah, he's gonna die because Moxley is good at the death match. That's true. The, the match can only end. be won by knockout or submission. No Wait, really. Ball. This match can only be won by a knockout or submission. I did not know that. That's, Texas that's match, insane. Baby. Moxie's that is gonna awesome. kill him. That's gonna be amazing. He's gonna, he's gonna trouble with a barbed wire. He's gonna, True. Um, next on the card, it's the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Championship. Will Ospreay and Hiromu Takahashi. Hiromu Takahashi's gonna win. Look, I'm just I'm gonna keep this very simple. The sex peg will retain. Uh, Schmidt, who Schmidt has Osprey. Osprey. So okay, my reasoning is that I think Osprey's gonna go up to heavyweights. He's going to lose the title and move up to heavyweight division. This is the time to do it. Takahashi just came back from a career-threatening injury. This is his big return to singles action. He's going to win, and he's going to be a new champion, and then Osprey's going to move on. Uh, the Osprey, because Osprey and Osprey. Okay. I'm Eric, a man of few words. Eric also picked Takahashi for the record. Well, Eric is wrong on that one. That's okay. We'll see. Uh, for the IWGP Intercontinental title, uh, Schmidt doesn't get to talk for the next five seconds. <laughs> uh, it's the sw- it's the the worst man to ever exist on the planet, the Switchblade Jay White, defending against Tetsuya Naito. Uh, Most charismatic man in New Japan. Tetsuya Naito will yeah, win the Intercontinental because, title. Yeah, because he's going to have both belts at the end of the night. We'll get to night two later. Schmidt, look, no. I, dummy. Just, I need you. I, Schmidt, I need you to just understand where Where's, you went. Where, I need, I need the dummy button. Here. Where? Hopefully, there's a dummy button. I need you to understand where you went wrong, and that's picking Switchblade to win anything. Uh, but the main event of night one for the IWGP Heavyweight Title, uh, Kazuchika Okada will defend against the G1 Climax winner, Kota Ibushi. I'm giving this one to my main man, Kota Ibushi. You're gonna dethrone Okada. This is bold. He's got it. Don't worry. He's bold. coming. Sure, it's the only title that Ibushi hasn't won in New Japan. It's the only title he I hasn't think won. I think there's a bigger story that's going to be told here. So that's why I picked. That's why I picked Okada. 
I'm picking Okada because Night 2 is going to be Naito versus Okada, a rematch versus Kingdom, I think, 11, when Okada beat Naito to retain the IWGP Heavyweight title in the main event. So Naito's going to right the wrongs with that Wrestle Kingdom and then beat Okada here. All right, so you say Okada. Uh, Schmidt. Eric has I Okada said, as well. I said Kota Ibushi. It did say Kota Ibushi. So it's, it's, it's three against three. You read that wrong. This, this, this one's split down the middle. You know what? That's okay. Sam has Ibushi. Eric has Okada. Scott has Okada. And this let's is, let's go back. Let's go back to the awards. Cause we're gonna take a break from night two. Not night two that. is gonna be later. So we're back to the part three of the shooties. Welcome back to the shooties. Welcome back to the shooties. I'm, I'm, MC Patan goes back to me. The first oh, yeah. award of uh, part three is the feud of the year. Uh, Schmidt, you first. Wait up. Wait up. I got, I got oh boy. It. Uh, uh, let, me, let me all find our notes. There it is. I got it. Okay. Uh, Schmidt, we're waiting on you. Which one is it? Feud. Feud, feud of the year. Number. Uh, um, it's before YouTube personality. Let's make it like twenty. I think. 20. It's 20. It's 20. Okay. Brian versus Miz. It's, it's still it's a, ongoing. It's a dec- I love it's a that feud, feud because it started on like the talk after show and it started with a very oh, no, shoot. It started in 2010. 2010 boy. on NXT, NXT season one. NXT. And then it, it, got, better, it got bigger with the SmackDown. Smack talking Smack. Talk, talking Smack. That was a great series. Miz's very big shoot on Brian, and I love it. His improv shoot, man can do. came out of nowhere. It was like, wow. It was awesome because uh, I saw that stuff. and I was like, oh. My feud of the year is um, Imperium versus British Strong Style from NXT UK. This feud started in January and went all the way to August, and it was incredible. So it started with, obviously, the, the debut when Pete Dunn got, it's like, oh, I'm going to lose now. <laughs> oh, I'm going to die. Oh, then, yeah. take her, then he killed him and take over New York. So he then Pete Dunn went to NXT US, basically. And then we saw... Walter and Imperium form up against the, uh, the tag division, and then we saw Tyler Bate get murdered a, on NXT a UK murder happened. at that when they were at download. And then oh my! And the best thing did you ever see? I don't know if you watched that segment, but it was on Trent Seven yelling Tyler as he was getting beaten down. No, it was some so they handcuffed Trent to the ropes and they just murdered Tyler Bate together. And Trent just yelling Tyler, Tyler. Oh, sorry, UK fans. And then he gets Tyler gets taken away to the hospital for the next couple of weeks, and then Tyler Bate returns on NXT UK. That, that's that's who does that's who does his finisher to Walter on the air in NXT UK, but then he holds up the belt, so curse. Happens. He, he goofed himself. Yep, he that, that's, that's in the writing was on the wall. But then we got the match of the year, which we got to later, and that and then and then it went off the air. British Strong Style embracing, and then we don't know what's happened. What's uh, going to happen? Let's go so to Eric. British Strong Style versus Imperium is my choice. Eric, let's see what he picked. I think he picked Gargano Cole. Let me see. Oh, it's number twenty. Let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. Let's go to what he. Picked. Omega versus Moxley was Eric's pick. That's bold. Yeah. No, that, no reason why. That's bold. So Eric, I could. It was. It was like the biggest feud in AEW. I think though. It I think it was their, AEW. That that or Cody Jericho was like their biggest feud. Yeah, I'll allow it. Um, um, it's a good pick. Um, I guess I'll vouch for him. They was set up at the first show and went all the way to their last pay per view of the year. Sure, it was supposed to happen at all out, but Mercer, it, it happens. Mercer happens. Uh, my feud um, of the year. Yeah, go. Uh, Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano. Look, great feud. They have uh such great chemistry in the ring. Uh, Johnny Gargano, uh, especially with the whole Champa thing, and then he had a bad case of neck, uh, and then Adam Cole came in, picked up the pieces, and was and we te- we hit F for our boy uh, Champa, though he's back. That's all that matters. Um, but it's it was just a roller coaster. You had great promo, you had great like interview bits, you had just great character work with Adam Cole and especially Gargano. The feel good moment where Gargano won, and then uh, Adam Cole winning the title clean, which I was there live for. Shout out to Connecticut, love you guys. Um, it was just a great series of matches, and it just it, emotions through the roof. Uh, so yeah, that's my feud of the year. So how are we? Uh, how are we doing this? Oh, this, I feel like it's in between. Uh, it's I'm between, sticking between, with my pick. It's either Imperium BSS or Cole Gargano, I think. I'll I'll, I'll go. Oh, to this Cole. this is tough. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go to again. Cole and Gar- Gargano. Uh, heads BSS versus Imperium. Oh yeah. Cole Gargano, baby! Tails. Tails never fails is the problem. So I, I'll, I'll vouch for, I guess, Cole Gargano. It had that amazing package of Adam Cole going around Cleveland and making fun of like, everyone that Johnny knew. Yeah. Like, he went to his dad's shop, put his picture on the wall, and I'm like, oh! Then, uh, it was, it, then he went to his wrestling school and made fun of all the people there. It was It was and great. Then Tucker showed up in NXT from, from his training school. This is true. That was really good, and Johnny came back. But you know what? Cole Gargano, few of the year. I like it. Uh, I'm glad you can use your towel to... I don't know what they're doing. Something... Do they even have towels? Like, do they even wear towels? Uh, no, we... that's pretty strong style. That, they could have actually used a towel. I'm sorry. Hey, blame the coin. The coin did it. It wasn't me. <laughs> me mad. <laughs> Tore gone. 
Uh, uh, next on the list is the finisher slash move of the year. All right, look, Eric didn't pick one, for Eric, the record. Uh, Eric is disqualified for so this one. So fuck Eric. So I'll start anyways, and uh, if anyone says otherwise, you're wrong, you're bad, and you're a dumb doo-doo head. Oh, I have a good one. So, uh, so I'm going to say Adam Cole's Panama Sunrise. It looks great. The combo was cool as too. Everyone that he's done it on, it, it just goes well. Dijak was funny. Ricochet at halftime heat was just great. Gargano um, with Taker when he fainted, that was cool. Gargano's was great. Um, I don't know. I don't think he hit it on Finn Balor. I don't know. No, he didn't. He only did the Panama Sunrise. Uh, Matt Riddle, it was great. Um, maybe Keith. I don't remember. I don't think he ever, uh, uh, Daniel so. Bryan. Um, oh, cool. That, that. Seth Rollins. Um, dude, it's a great move. It's and they're finally bringing back Canadian destroyers because hey, WWE they actually win matches. Me. They actually win matches. It wins matches now. Panama Sunrise doesn't anywhere else. Move of the year, even, uh, even in, in the NWA. Big style. What do we got? Uh, Walter's chops. What else? Do I, <laughs> just <laughs> it hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt it's, equal. They, they're gunshots. It hurt equal good. They, they make you cringe. It's like oh, like I watched when I watched him first bait back. I'm like he just chopped him in the back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Her equal good. Schmitty ice. Like him in the neck. Um, I know. I will go with RKL because yeah. it's been my it's favorite move. Too. It's been my favorite move since I since I started watching WWE back in when I was uh, 11 years old, back in 2011. A wee child. A wee child. A wee, a wee it's lad. It's been my favorite move. Randy Orton's still in the WWE, so I can count it still. As long as he is in the WWE, I can still count it. She and will I be love for it. the rest of his career. And also, I use it on my personal WWE customized move. I call it the Danger Drive, but that's beside the point. Yeah, you're not okay. allowed. You're not allowed to name moves. That's me. All right. Uh, chops. Chops got to win this one. You know one. what? I'll concede the chops. I'll concede. You just, you just want. You just want few I'm of the year. I'm sticking with so. RK. Yeah, but Walter Chops are gonna. Walter Chops. Sorry, kid. Hey, Walter. Walter has two awards. Hey man, I'll let my man do his thing. You got uh, you And he'll take that. Ch- he'll take uh, that towel to wipe off his hands after yeah, he after chops. After gets murdered. After he chops Joe Coffey in his face. And then also kills Wolfgang and Mark Coffey. Uh, yeah. Um, next, we have the worst promotion. Our, our one negative. Our one negative promotion. And want... look, I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, this, this, if we this, all, I think this is all just decisive. I think this is all decisive, and I hate to be this guy. I hate to be mean. Ring of Honor, you've been sucking it. This is my call look, out. Ring of Honor, fight me. Bad. It was bad. Look, no, and I, it I love, no holds barred. I love PCO. Do not get me wrong. PCO shouldn't be world champion, though. Ring of Honor, worst promotion. Uh, I believe we're all in agreement. Yeah, no, yep. this is easy. All right. Everything G1 Supercard. That's Sorry. That's the stock going down. Uh, bold, <laughs> uh, bold statement for 2020. Uh, I don't think Ring of Honor lasts. Yeah, no, no I can see it. I'd say Ring of Honor ends holiday 2020. Well, they're, they're, they, just, they just lost Marty, or they're going to. They lost Marty. They're going to yeah. lose. But where is Marty Squirrel going? I kind of want to say the NWA personally. Uh, we don't know. Uh, yeah, no, but I, I think we're going to. He's in the he's in NWA right now. I think we're going to. I'm assuming best promotion. Best promotion. Yep. Best, best promotion. promotion. Uh, um, I'll go first. NXT because yeah, it's just the best show to watch. Has a lot of good talent. Has the PC people as well. There's a lot of people coming up in that performance center like Austin Theory, Santana Garrett, Shotzi Blackheart, Scarlet Bordeaux. There's a lot of people coming up from there. Not to mention their general roster. Um, look who you have. We're also gonna count, we're also gonna count NXT UK in this because oh, let's be real, they're they're, they're connected. Oh, oh. So we have freaking Adam Cole here, Keith Lee, Dijakovic, all of the disputed era, Walter, um, Tyler Bate, Pete Dunn, Trent. Set, how, I think yeah, it's this a, town pool is immense. It's a good roster oh. and just consistently good. Schmidt, going with AEW because, mm. like it says in your explanation, I'm gonna say the same thing. It basically pulled off something that WCW could not pull off. And it's basically the better WCW. We have people like John Moxley. We got uh, Luchasaurus. We got Cody. We got Chris Jericho. I can't name any others because I can't think of any. But I'll na- I'll name them when I explain. yeah. But they are very very good, and I love AEW so much. I've started watching it really recently, and it it's just it's very good. I liked watching Cody kick the door off of kick a door down to get to Chris Jericho. Look, it's fun. Look, uh, I also expect the AEW look, and they're not—they're not always going to top in ratings. NXT is better in ratings. Who cares about ratings? Uh, anyone who loves ratings, dummies is, online is dummies online. But they're doing something that wasn't possible since WCW, and they're doing it better than WCW. You have got you have you know ex WWE guys, which is where all your marketing is going to come in, like Jake Hager, John Moss, Chris Jericho. But you also have guys that you're really investing in, like Darby, which is awesome. You have uh, ex WWE guy, my dad, Sean Spears. You have guys like Joey Janela, even though I hate Joey Janela. Fuck Joey Janela. Sorry, Sam. Sorry, Sam. Joey Janela sucks. I don't like him. You got Orange Cassidy. You got the best friends. 
Uh, you got the Lucha Bros. You got Christopher Daniels, the Fallen Angel. You got all these guys and your women's division, although NXT women's division is better. It's way better. Uh, and I'm not, I won't get in that rant later. I'll save that for a hot uh, sauna seat episode. But they're doing something that no one thought was possible, and even they called out Dave Meltzer, and they're like, we did it. Screw you. That's right. That's like 2018. But you know what? They're doing it. AEW. Eric, also, oh, Eric, I believe, also did NXT. Let's look at Eric's notes. Um, Eric, where are you? Where is Eric? He's very much home right now. But for besides reasons. that, uh, uh, no, you just oh no no you had it go down no you had it keep going down scrolling through something keep going right down now. keep one personality that's weekly show oh I was wrong the hell is it? oh wait I typed it wrong I'm you are trailer. you nope. okay um Eric he has he has he has like one sentence NXT has produced the best matches best stories best moments from any other promotion in 2019 all right let's flip this coin what do you want uh, heads NXT even though you think tails never fails it failed earlier. But it did not fail. NXT. Heads. Yeah, All right. Bro. You know what? Hell yeah, brother. I'll allow it. NXT is... I watch AEW more. I don't think I've missed an episode of Dynamite. I'll watch... I've NXT. I'll, I'll tape I've NXT. Seen every, I've, seen, I've seen every Dynamite. I watch NXT live, then I watch Dynamite on demand. See, I'm the opposite. I after. watch AEW live, and I tape NXT. I mean, NXT is also hey, more accessible than Dynamite because the network. Yeah, that's fair. But I, I also... Live, I, have, I, like I love surprised. Hulu. Hulu, I can watch both. Hulu live. I also uh, have a Fire Stick, which is right here on the desk, but you can't see it. Um, um, is it the final, final one of part three? Final one of part three is our first like big award. It's the female superstar of the year. This is easy. It's it's Becky Lynch. All right, uh, I will agree only because she has become something more like she's hit rock and Cena level where where people say her name and it's not even about wrestling. It's just her charisma. Mm -hmm. If it was about wrestling, I would say Shayna Baszler because I think Shayna Baszler is a better wrestler. I disagree. But like, but like, Shayna Baszler had an amazing year. But Becky Lynch has her charisma has gotten her to a place above. I think people wrestling. forget. I think people forget also what Becky Lynch actually did this year too. Because she's not like, like she won the Rumble. She won the main, Rumble, of, main event of Mania. Also has really good pay per view matches. I don't care what people say. She does. She, her matches are, are good. Are very good. I didn't like Hell in a Cell as much as you guys. Her match. It's I hard. thought it was it was good. I didn't think it was it's great. It, it was match of the night. But that's, which I, which yeah. that's hard, that's not hard to do. The rest of the card was yeah, but. Hell Hell in a Cell was not a good pay per view, and I think we were all here for that. Yeah. We were all in the studio. It was the best female match in the main roster, it was no shit. doubt. Yeah, it was fair. Also, Becky Lynch versus Oscar is underrated. Everyone talks about Sasha versus Ronda now, and I'm like, that was good, but I think Becky but Lynch no, uh, was better. Becky Lynch female superstar. It's easy did. because she also, it's also that mainstream success she has too. Because people actually, here's the thing: I hate people saying that she's forced. People wanted this push. People, people wanted, wanted the this push, push, and the, like I, I can understand the whole it's forced now because you hit a point, and the WWE has a real problem with this. Is that and this is my this is my shoot moment of the episode. They have a real problem of they like they'll give people pushes and then they'll go too far. They haven't hit it yet with Becky. They did it with Seth, but then they fixed it. They did that. it with Seth. They, they fixed, fixed it. it. They do it with Charlotte a lot, where they will push yeah, she's, her. She's just really in a weird. They'll spot. push her and then they'll go too far and they'll have her be too okay. dominant. Then they take it away. They did it with Ronda. Ronda's gone. That Ron is having a family now, and she won't return. Anyone who says she'll return is dumb. Dummy. Yeah. But yeah. they have a problem of, like, they want to push someone, and then they don't know when to stop because they're like, oh, the crowd's going to love it. The crowd's going to love it. The crowd's going to love it. And then they immediately turn. I think the closest to hitting that point now is Bray Wyatt. I think yeah, they're, Fiend, well, people they're still pushing like him a little too far. Yeah, like, like, I don't think he should have won the title. It's Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it was too early. And but it worked out. It did work I'll, out. I'll, like, I'm fine with it. He, he won has a cool title-looking title now. Yeah. You're wrong. It's okay. <laughs> His fiend it's title's cool. gross. It's cool. I mean, the eco-friendly title's cool. It's eco-friendly title is much better. But look, I, they're pushing him. I think they're just hit the point of too far, and that's why I think Daniel Bryan should win at Rumble. I Ooh, think he should win. That's so bold. In that, you can do Bryan versus Miz for the title. I think Bryan Miz like at Mania for the title would work. I would like that. Even Miz though win? Miz won't win the Rumble because the maybe you gotta do it another way. You the top two way. contenders from Mitch, an article Mitch. I read. Roman Reigns Kane and Velasquez. Kane Velasquez to win the Royal We totally Rumble. changed from female back to male now, which is funny. Uh, but uh, back to back to the awards time. Uh, Becky Lynch. Yeah, this is easy. It's I, too easy. I, I originally said Nikki Cross because I love Nikki Cross, but I'm going to go with Becky Lynch. Becky well. Lynch. It's three against one because Eric has Shayna Baszler, which is – that's respectable. We don't talk about Eric, but uh, Becky it's, Lynch. It's, it's respectable. It's three against one. I'm sorry, Eric, but, like, Eric did mention Survivor Series because she, she did tap out. That was early. a great moment. That was, was a her. really good moment also, for Shayna. It, even, like, the ending where she got put to the table, that builds towards a Mania match. People need to, people need to realize that, too. Yeah. People are complaining. And about. Shayna's absolutely winning the Rumble. She's Probably. absolutely it's winning. It's her or Sasha. It's her or Sasha. Nah. Sasha Probably versus Bayley is going to happen at Mania. And that would be soft. But, uh, yeah, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch. Yeah, sorry. Anybody else who is a dummy? Sorry, Tessa Blanchard. You're not winning it either. Uh, look, Tessa, you had a solid year, and you're doing the whole... Okay, you're... Tessa Blanchard. 
I love you, but what did you do this year? You had good matches, but you didn't win. I'm sorry. Just win the title. Here's... Just I, like, don't get me wrong. I love Tessa Blanchard. I She's think she, she has great character work. But here's... And I think I've said this on a previous episode. Said it to me, I think. Is that Impact is making her... And here and this is also the problem I have with Becky, where I know Stell got really mad, but this is the thing with their characters. Recycled characters always work. It is, But it just... How does your charisma work? I Becky, think it's more obvious in her in this is case. my this is my shoot statement, and that a lot of people got mad when I said it to other people is that Becky is stone cold number two, it, but she has a lot more charisma. That's why she's more hurt, but she has like, there's she, like, she has her thing like she changed it up a bit. But if you break it, if we were down, like in January to May, then yeah, it's yeah. More if you there. break it down more, like she started a stone cold two, which is why her character worked. But now she's breaking off, and she she's she, 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 she has her own layers. Tessa Blanchard is China number two. Except Tessa Blanchard is, is get, doing it better than China because actually, Tessa Blanchard's a lot more athletic. She's she jumps for, she's really athletic. And don't get me wrong, R.I.P. China, love that woman. Yeah, China's but, very good, but like she, Tessa's more of like a complete athlete than China. China's more of a powerhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's why I describe it. China was just power, and but she, Tessa she can still fight women really well too. Up. I think she's better fighting women than she is fighting men. Uh, is that it for this uh, part? Let's yeah, go, that's in, yeah, that's the end of part Let's go to part two. We'll, talk, we'll talk more about big stuff later. Oh, yeah, part two, yeah, because it's one sponsor where we did it. We you changed know, the order up. We'll do the sponsor later. So night That'll two. That'll be after the next part. Uh, I am, I am your, uh, your master back, of ceremonies MC again. Back to Tim. Thank you, guys. Uh, so night two, because this is, I think, the first two-night Wrestle Kingdom. It is. Which, History. holy Mania shit snacks, this. dude. Mania should do this. I mean, they should do this. They won't, but they should. Dummies. So pre-show for night two. It is a gauntlet match for the Never Open Weight six-man tag team. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this, so hold on. This is a long name. So the most violent players and the coach are defending against Chaos, which is Ishii, Yoshihashi, Robbie Eagles, Bullet Club, Bad Luck Folly, Chase Owens, and Yujiro Takahashi, LIJ, which is Evil, Shingo, and Bushi, and Suzuki Gun, Taichi, El Desperado, and Yoshinobu, Kanemaru. I, I think, pick Chaos for this one. It's a good pick. I picked LIJ. LIJ. LIJ because I think they, they might lose on night one, but I think they'll rebound on night two by winning. Uh, Schmidt, I... I picked Bullet Club. I think you did pick Bullet Club. That's I did pick Bullet Club. All, all pretty good choices. Not going to lie. All solid choices. These are all new champions. This is also all new champions in different ways. Bullet Club. Rock and roll. All right. All right. Uh, safe bits. Uh, Yushin Thunder Liger's retirement match, which this is just a bad match. Don't put him in a tag this match. This is a weird match. Uh, and then we'll get to Stell being the absolute mark that he is. Uh, Jushin, I'll explain <laughs> that. Jushin Thunder Liger and Naoki Sano versus Dragon Lee and Hiromu Takahashi. I think... Stell is the only one to say that Yushin Thunder Liger, Liger will lose his retirement match. It's a trope in wrestling. Everybody loses their retirement match. That was that was very old older school. There people are. Now, Angle just lost his retirement match at Mania. Yeah, that was a bit. Well, because I think he wanted to go out like that. I, I think, think I think Liger so, wants to do the same thing. I think Put somebody Liger's over on the way out. Gonna win. Takahashi will pin Liger. That's bold. I think Takashi could use it then. Yeah, exactly. He'll be new champion. Then he'll pin Liger. That's a big pedestal to be put uh, on right but in return. Uh, Schmidt and the rest of us are very normal in this. And Everyone that, said Liger, but Jushin Thunder Liger will win his retirement match and go out high. If he I should. win, I'm going to laugh at you all. <laughs> I'll allow you to laugh at us all. I'll allow you to make a post about it. That's funny. Uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Title, Bullet Club, Taiji Ishimori, and El Phantasmo, a.k.a. whatever his name was in Lucha Underground. I forget what it was. Was uh, it King Cuerno? I think so. Was he? Okay. Well, They're Shou defending Yo. against uh, Sho and Yo. We're gonna have new. Tag. We're gonna have new uh, junior heavyweight tag champs showing yeah, you. Yeah, but say it's Eric and Tim picking Rapunky 3K. And everybody else picked Bullet Club. Showing you, baby. This is, is our this, time. This one's kind of tough. I think Bullet Club are gonna have a better night too. So I, I think, think this was the toughest of this night. Yeah, I no, think this, I think this is this is a hard thing. I think Bullet Club are gonna have a rebound this night. They're gonna lose night one. They're gonna have a bad night one, but they're gonna rebound here by retaining the titles. Maybe win the gob. I think LJ is gonna win that because what's gonna happen later. But they're gonna keep their titles here, and then we'll get to the other matches later. Yeah. So Bullet Club. Uh, Schmidt, I showing think you. you pick. Yep, Schmidt had Bullet Club. Bullet Club. Yep. All right. I picked next. all Bullet Club. Uh, that, which makes sense. What uh, a mark. Uh, what a mark. Uh, <laughs> British heavyweight title, Zack Sabre Jr. defense against Sonata. This will be good. This will be a great match. Uh, ZSJ, good. baby. Sonata. This one's going to be very, I think this is going to be a very telling Stop. match, too, because I think if Sonata loses, Don't. he might be on his way out. There are, there are rumors that Triple H wants to sign Sonata. That's not bad. That's, that's bold, but like, it could He happen. shows up at, uh, not Blackpool, uh, or, Oregon. Shows up Portland. That'd be crazy. Uh, so if he loses, then it might happen. But I think yeah, I think Sonata, yeah, I think Sonata's winning. Because Wrestle they have a history of signing someone right after Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, because like last Wrestle Kingdom was Kushida. Kushida showed up at um, New York or was announced in New York. So then uh, Kushida's doing okay right now. He's doing all right. Uh, ZSJ. This is this is tough, but I'm thinking Sonata because I think they want to push Sonata as well. And I think if I think he's going to win because I think he's going to stick around with Lij. I think ZSJ. Yep, uh, yep. And Zack Sabre Jr. with my favorite quote of wrestling ever, 
which was putting on a technical match for an American audience is like reading Shakespeare to a dog. That's funny. Is the best That's statement funny. ever. That's funny. Zach Sabre uh, Jr. Sam Elswes, CSJ, Eric has Sonata. I think Scott has Sonata. Scott, so it's it's three. It's split down the middle again. All right. Uh, singles, uh, U.S. champ. U.S. championship. So basically it's John Moxley, because let's be real here, Sorry, defending man, against uh, Juice Robinson. Uh, Juicy, you got it. Yeah. There, there two could, title changes in There could nights. be a swerve here where Moxley wins, and that's when the partnership comes back. I think we're going to save that for a little bit later. Because yeah, there's another match in this card. I don't think there's going to be a partnership. Yeah, unless Tony Khan's there, which I don't think he is. Um, nope. Yeah, can, uh, Juice, because this is also, I think I think Juice was supposed to win it anyway for Moxley until that typhoon happened. So I think this is them redoing that, and Juice will win here. He'll be U.S. champion again. Moxley's deal is going to be done because his deal runs through Wrestle Kingdom with New Japan. Juice! So he'll be an alumni after this show. Uh, Schmidt, I think you also had... Oh, he had Mox. Ooh. I had Mox. You had Mox, oh, you did Juice. You, you want to change it? Uh, no, I'll stick with Mox. Okay. I, I like that. Mox, I think it's, is it split? Let's see, so it's Sam has Moxley. Uh, Scott, yes, yeah, it's, it's split. I like that. I like that. I'll stick with Mox. Uh, right. Mox. Never won a title. Uh, Kenta, Hideo Itami, uh, whatever. Uh, shut up. Uh, Kenta defends against Ruki Goto. Uh, um, Kenta! Kenta, yep. Both Let's go, club. baby. Both club needs a good night. So, uh, I'm gonna pick, uh, Scott and Eric have Goto. Which, that makes I, mean, I not, honestly, this, I can, this, this I'm fine with hard. that. This one's also kind of hard. Goto's also a pretty big dude, from what I remember. This is, this was tough, Pretty but sure Goto's a big dude. I think, I think it'll be a great match. I think it'll be, be close to match I think, I think all singles matches on the side are gonna be really good. But, uh, Kenta. Yep, Kenta. Um, uh, bronze medal match. The bronze, the third place match. So in our, and so in my world, it is. So basically, it could be it's whatever. Bushi versus White in my world. It's, I think mine is a uh, Okada and Switchblade. Yep. And I said uh, Okada because you know what? Fuck I have Switchblade. I have a Bushi versus um, Switchblade, and I said Switchblade. Sorry, Bushi, you're having a bad weekend. Fuck the Switchblade. Uh, I'm gonna change it to Switchblade. Whoa, boy! So you're changing your pick on night one too, isn't it? Yep. So who so you're going for now? So you're gonna go for Naito. Yeah. Okay. So change of heart. All right. Like you that. know what? We approve of that. Schmidt, uh, you better not be lying. Cause I'm about to make this official. Breaking news. Schmidt. Uh, Schmidt. Schmidt. No longer on the Switchblade bandwagon. Good. You made the right choice Honestly, there. you made a good choice, sir. <laughs> um, I'm going to make this official. Uh, Sorry, st- yeah. uh, Stel, you can keep rambling while I type. Yeah. So I think this is – so we don't know because this match is very much to be determined. So – I'm gonna say Abushi's gonna to lose to Okada, and he's gonna he's gonna. But you say you, so. You're saying Switchblade's gonna win the third place and beat Okada. Yes. Okay. He beat Okada, I think, last year. Rescued them too. Uh, I was Maybe gonna say Scott last. also picked Switchblade to win this. Wow. So you guys have the majority now. He ain't, he ain't gonna beat Naito. Because Sam real. and I picked Okada to get third place, and Eric picked Kota Abushi to get third place. Then you can then you can switch my last one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> you'll, sw- you'll switch to the correct answer. Yes. All right, cool. We'll get to that later. We'll get more on that later. Let's go to the, <laughs> the semi-main last. event. Uh, so which Chris Jericho, Le Champion, against Hiroshi Tanahashi, and if Tanahashi wins, he will receive an AEW World Title match. Look, I so want- Eric changes pick. Eric changes to Tanahashi, but it's still split down the middle because I think Le Champion is going to win with some help from the Inner Circle. I think the Inner Circle will show up at New Japan. I agree. Be Tanahashi. the inner circle. Be it's the gonna be, I think, inner circle. I think, no, I want chaos. I want chaos to happen when I'm all across the world. And I want Tanahashi. Because if Tanahashi wins, that's your Revolution main event. It's is gonna be Tanahashi insanity. versus Jericho, and that's nuts. But that's an um, AEW New Japan Super Card. I think it's a swerve. I think it's a red herring. I think Jericho's gonna win. Tanahashi, because I want. I just want chaos. And then oh, Tanahashi's a legend. Our main event of night two, the double gold dash for basically to unite the heavyweight and intercontinental titles. Um, it's whoever. So in, our, in, my, in our world, it is Tetsuya Naito, the IC champion, against, well, in my world, against Okada. So I have Naito versus Ibushi, and you know what? Naito's going to do it. I think Scott's the only one who didn't pick Naito. Uh, no. Scott picked Okada. Scott picked Okada, and Sam picked Ibushi. Oof. And then Schmidt now has And Schmidt, Naito. you changed it to the correct answer, which is going to be Tetsuya Naito. So, well, mm-hmm. so it's, 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 everyone has someone good, so. This and no one has tough. Switchblade now. The, re- so, the reason sh- we're in a good timeline is because I thought about it and I was like, Switchblade's not going to win this race. Yeah, no. Schmidt, I'm glad you saved yourself time and you saw things my way. Yeah, so my story is that Naito will defeat Okada and rewrite the wrongs for Rescue Them 11. There you go. Double it, champion. If Switchblade... Also, he wants to be double champion. This has been a story for like a year now for Naito. I'll give you a half point if Switchblade wins because it's... honestly. It's, it's bold. Give it's bold. Yeah, those are our Wrestle Kingdom 14 predictions. All right. This coming weekend. Let's, let's go to part four. Chaos. Stout, you are now the MC once again. My talk comes back to me. Our first, so we're in, two, we're in our part last four. two segments. Our first award for part four is best commentator. Uh, I'll start Tim this first. one. 
Uh, I'm gonna say Excalibur because he just he knows what to say. He's carries really good. Team. He's speaking good words, and carries he really that. carries AEW. Don't get me wrong. I like Tony Schiavone. I think Schiavone and Jr. should switch because Jr. You're just not speaking. Well. I'll get the names right in the end. You right, know what? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Excalibur. Um, yeah, uh, Schmidt. Who you got? I picked. Um, I think I picked Nigel, but Nigel's a very good pick. If... I'm not gonna lie. Nigel was very Which good. Which one was the one that Corey Graves fucking hates? Morrow. Oh, uh, then I'm, I'm going to change Morrow because fuck Corey Graves. Fuck Corey Graves. Corey Graves sucks. Uh, Morrow, which I haven't... I saw the uh, I saw the Morrow documentary, which is free on YouTube. Really? The, the Bipolar Rock and Roller. It was pretty damn good. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I, yeah, Should all watch it. Like I said, fuck Corey Graves. Fuck Corey Graves. Because he's a dickhead. He is, he is a dickhead. Retired wrestler. Um, Eric, I think, also picked Morrow. Let me see here. Yep, Eric picked Morrow. He didn't write why, though. But I'm assuming you'll explain why, because you also yeah, picked Mauro. I, I, I did pick Mauro Ranello. Um, he brings excitement to it. He also has a good way of bringing a sports and, uh, approach to commentary, because, you know, he does legitimate sports I was going to say, he, well. do, he, does yeah. H, he does HBO boxing. He does a lot of indie stuff. He does... He, was on SmackDown he for does, a time. Uh, He used to do Bellator for a bit. So, yeah, he knows what he's talking about. He knows, yeah. he does and, everything. like, when he gets excited, he gets excited. And he also gets pop culture references on a dime. Dude, he gets... And you also, know what? They're to, help him, they're to help him as much as McGinnis help hype things up even more. So I think, like, a big shining moment for commentary for those two is when Candy Ray showed up on NXT and then Mike baked it up so well. Whereas on Dynamite that night, JR is like, oh, oh, the big man's back. It's Luchasaurus. And I'm like, god Who? damn it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll concede. Yeah. I'll concede. It's three, against, yeah, it's three against one. Sorry, I'll, Tim. I'm, I'm sorry. I love you. Alex Scott was probably my number two. I'm going to be real. No, I'll concede. Mario Ronaldo, you can use that towel to beat Corey Graves. To beat Corey Graves, but also wipe off your sweat and uh, maybe to fix your throat when you scream at takeovers because, dude, I can tell you're losing your voice. It's, it's respectable. It hurts. It hurts sometimes. But we, we respect them. But, hey, I respect you, man. Um, next up on the list, it is the best heel. Or in the Cold Hog Wrestling Podcast context, Diddler. The Diddler. Uh, I'll start. I'll start again. Whether yeah. you're uh, you're you're blind, stupid, deaf, dumb, or any of the above, the answer is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, aka MJF, aka you can go fuck yourself, everybody. Uh, than you and look, you know it. he is better than you, and you know it. He's just he is great at just saying things that make you say, "What the absolute fuck did you just say to me right now?" <laughs> um, it's just he say thing like he makes fun of wheelchair people. Um, he Dude, brings he up uh, Jericho. People. He brings up Jericho's uh, stupid shit. Um, he just says things that are fantastic. So uh, MJF best heel. He's like twenty three years old. He is a y- two years older than me, which is scary. A year older than Sam now because he turns twenty two. He's my age. That's scary. Uh, MJF best heel. Fair. Uh, Schmidt. I picked Seth Rollins because <laughs> right now. Right Seth now, Rollins versus himself was a good feud. Big old yeah, bold. Because he took a shot at my dad, CM Punk, and people fucking hated him he also, for it. He also went after Osprey. Yeah, he went after uh, Osprey. People fucking hate him for it. He's going after the crowd right now, and people fucking hate him. People are booing him, which is what you need. You don't want a heel that is cheered. You want a heel that is completely fucking booed and that nobody likes. That is the purpose of a heel. And that is why I think Seth Rollins could win because nobody fucking likes him. Yeah, no, because Seth Rollins the person is such an unlikable person. Yes, <laughs> although he is dating Becky Lynch. They're I, engaged. Oh yeah, he is engaged to Becky Lynch. Actually, if don't. he didn't, if he didn't have her, he'd be even worse probably. Yeah, I don't understand what Becky Lynch sees in him. It must be a, it must be like a behind the scenes. thing. Honestly, probably it must be monster dick. Probably. There is that picture that was leaked a long time ago. <laughs> there is that. We don't talk about that. Like, <laughs> what what you bad. talk about? That's one thing I feel bad for him about. What a man, what a man, um, what a mighty good man. So my pick is the NXT champion, Adam Cole. Bye-bye. All right, that's not bad. So I think we'll, let's go back to the Gargano feud. And my shining moment for Adam Cole as a heel is on the package where he's... Actually, breaking Twitter. news, because I just saw this text from Sam. Not only is it his birthday, it's also PCO's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. You're even older now. PCO, what a man. You're All right, you older. may continue while I find out PCO's yeah. age. Oh, he's pretty, what, like 55 now, probably? Uh, hold on. 70? Hold on. Hold on. It's he's, right he's, here. He's not, not Rock and Roll Express. Uh, it is. That's not it. It is. He, today, turns 52. Holy fuck. PCO, the ROH, ROH, world, ROH world Champion, is 52. I'm going to use the bathroom. Uh, you keep doing the thing. Yeah, Adam Cole, um, mainly because he is a very good heel. That package against Johnny Gargano on the build to take over Toronto was excellent. He also has a good stable around him. They actually aren't cowards they're actually a proper team that doesn't run away from fights that often he's very good in the ring very good heel good on the mic good talker he doesn't really bury his opponents as much as like some other heels do but even as mjf doesn't either he actually has logic when he thinks and i could concede because eric also picked mjf we'll get to that in a bit but adam cole good stable leader good character 
has good logic, has some really good high packages from this year against his opponents. So, yeah, Adam Cole. Um, Eric has picked MJF, probably for which, similar reasons that Tim did. Which means and, we lost. Well, yeah, it's because it's 2. It's 2-1-1. Two, one, one. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, it looks like it's going to be MJF. And when Tim gets back... If I could do a a real... Uh, my th- if I could do a stable of the decade, it would be the Nexus because... They only last like a year, though. I, I know they last a year. Like a year. By my fucking, because I know him personally, Uncle John Cena buried I him. Would, I was very mad at well, him. Well, no one liked that anyway. Like, i very mad Jericho at and Edge him. were like, yeah, that shouldn't have happened. Even Cena got convinced that that shouldn't have happened I, either. Yeah, you, no, Cena literally has, has told me beforehand that that shouldn't have happened. That's, yeah, it was not, was not good. Um, and is he back? He's, He's back. What's up? So yeah, we're back. So um, for context, we were just we were just checking because we have a couple people in chat um, or watching. Um, Is so, it Sam or Eric? Uh, they haven't said anything. Well, I'll figure it out. You continue. Um, so yeah, Eric picked MJF as well. Tim. Ah, see, so Eric two, gets it right. So it's two versus one versus one in terms of picks. Uh, well, I don't know who. Anyways, right. uh, so uh, so because uh, MJF is the right answer. That's so why. MJF won because it's two one one. Hell yeah, he is. MJF beats Adam Cole out. Maxwell um, Jacob Friedman, MJF. Uh, he's gonna use that towel. Uh, he's gonna make some. He's gonna wear it across his neck. Absurd. Oh, he, he can make, make it into the scarf. Or he'll yeah. just he'll shit on it. I don't know. Whatever Next, you want. We're gonna, switch, we're gonna switch alignments. Go to the best baby face now. Still. The best good guy. I'll let you start so, that off, baby. It's gonna be Mama Storm's baby boy, Tim Storm. Oh yeah. The N- <laughs> NWA gets some recognition now. The NWA are getting in these awards because Nick Hollis didn't win one earlier. So Tim Storm. Um, so there are a couple other good things. I want to give honorable mentions to Tessa Blanchard, Kobe Kingston, Cody, Rey Mysterio, and Johnny Gargano get honorable mentions for this. Um, but Tim Storm, when you watch NWA Power and you watch Tim Storm do a promo, he has one of the most genuine connections with the crowd of like anybody else in wrestling. Pretty damn good, man. So he, has, he has like a real story to tell, too. It's such like a normal story. You know, he talks about his mom and like what, what her daily life is like, what he's been doing, and like how... He like has his connection with the people because you know because people can empathize with that. Mama Storm's ninety five now. Yeah, she is ninety five, and you know she she's retired. She's making eight bucks an hour but, down uh, south. But uh, yeah, best baby face is Mama Storm's baby boy. Tim Storm. I agree. Oh yeah. So it's, and Eric Eric picks Cody, which is a good which is a good choice. Which, but look, which, yeah, Tim, that's the easy answer. That's the easy. Answer, but that Tim Storm. Easy. You Tim know Storm. what? NWA gets an award. Tim Storm. He's gonna, power is good. NW, uh, let's see. He's going to use that towel. You know what? He's going he's to give it as a gift to Mama Storm because you know what? She deserves some good things too. Tim Storm. Hell yeah, baby. Um, so we're going to the moments or moments of the year. So this can be like, there's like people. We have like a couple of it written down. I think we each have something different for yeah, this. We all, we all, because we all, it's all day. I think it's all uh, different. You know what, Eric? Eric had a couple. Uh, of over down. not live, but what did Eric pick? Eric has a couple things written down. Eric um, has the one following ones written down. Gargano winning NXT title, John Moxley debut, Dynamite premiere episode, Valor comes back to NXT, Shepard returns, Fiend debut, Walter debut. That's not so. A couple for a couple written down. All right, uh, Stell, you're already here. I have a couple written down as well. Um, we go to my doc. That's the agenda. Wrong document. Wrong doc, baby. So if I had to pick one, it's Becky Lynch winning the Royal Rumble. Um, honorable mentions go to her winning the main event of Mania. Kofi winning the WWE Championship is another one. Gargano winning the title. Walter's debut, Abushi winning the G1. That was not no bad. One, no one doesn't get mentioned. Bailey's heel turn being like a full thing when she killed the Bailey buddies. That was good. That was a really good moment. Ripley winning the NXT Women's Championship was a great moment then the year. Um, the press conference for AEW back in January when they first announced the company. That was, that's when Jericho first showed up and everything. That was really big, and Pac was there. It was a really good um, press conference. Love that. Bret Hart shows up the AEW World Title Double or Nothing. Got the first look at the title. MJ promo second with Bret Hart. Really good moment. Um, Becky Lynch and The Rock cross paths on the SmackDown premiere on Fox. Which was nice. Very, because The Rock wanted that segment, fun fact. He did ask for it. He demanded that segment, otherwise he probably wouldn't have done anything. And Finn Balor's heel turn. Nobody saw it coming. No one saw that coming. Um, Schmidt. Oh, okay, Schmidt. I won't be last, because I don't want to explain. Wow, all right. Hey, talk's enough for me. Or Tim, go. Uh, Mine, I did pick one moment, and both of you already talked about it, so I'm assuming it's going to win. It's Johnny Gargano winning the NXT title. Um, It was just a very feel-good moment. You know, he finally finally climbed the top of the mountain. He couldn't defend it, but that's a different story. It happened. He finally, he had the moment. Oh, Champa came out. He broke kayfabe and got the tremendous love from Champa. And Candice. And it's just, and Candice. And it's just, it's a man who gives his all for NXT. Um, and he, that was the best moment. It was such a feel good moment. Uh, Johnny Gargano winning. And Schmidt. Okay. I swear to God, if you talk about your dad, I'm going to beat you up. No, it's not. Good. My favorite moment, I'm going to bring you back to 2011 to Baby Boy Matt Schmidt. He was watching 
One of his favorite wrestlers, and still is one of his favorite wrestlers, was Kofi Kingston. Kofi Kingston has been his favorite, has been my favorite wrestler since I was going to say, you're still talking to the third person. Love that. <laughs> it's been my I favorite wrestler since dicks. 2011. I always thought he was so underrated. Then he got the New Day, and I was very happy about it. Um, like he said, it was one of, it, 2011 was one of the best times of the year. But the only problem was Randy Ke- Randall Keith Orton stopped him from winning the WWE Championship. He even stopped him from having a match because he didn't think he was ready. But this year at WrestleMania, Kofi got his match. He won the WWE Championship. This has been leading up since 2011. 11 years. It's a feel-good moment, and then he had a really good really good feud with said Randall Keith Orton, which brought me back to 2011. It made me feel like I was back in 2011 watching that those matches again it made me really happy and i just love kofi kingston so shout out to kofi kingston if he ever decides to listen to this podcast i love him so much there's a new day podcast there's a new day podcast um so i i think we all three of us said gargano so i think we should give it to gargano yeah i think i will give it to gargano even though my main pick is the rumble but yeah you know what i gargano winning the nxt title he that was absolutely i think think this close now champa really hammers at home too the champa gave broken kayfabe nobody 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 knew i didn't see that coming but yeah Yeah. Uh, he's not gonna use that towel for anything. I can't think of anything. You can give it to be, have it you can give it to Candace as a gift. Who knows? I think it's the first one he's won today too. Um, the final one of part four is the male superstar of the year. I'm changing mine. Are you oh. changing yours? Yes. Male Breaking star. news. Breaking news. Another change. For Holy Matt Schmidt. shit! What are we um, changing to? Schmidt Stardust, baby. Come on. Okay. This is your um, moment. This is your time. I'm gonna change it back to my man, the main man, Kofi Kingston. He had a great year. He had one of the greatest years, in my opinion, of wrestling. He won the championship, the WWE Championship, 11 years in the making. He basically, he's been with the New Day still. He is a tag champ. He became a lot of things. He also had an old 2011 feud with Randall Keith Orton, which he had one of the best promos. More on that later. And that's my pick. Uh, Uh, Next, um, I'm not going to mention him. Walter is my male superstar of the year. Here's my reasoning. So the debut at Blackpool, big deal. Big deal. That's the, one of the best matches of the year against Pete Dunne. That was an amazing match. That was my match of the year until Cardiff happened. Yeah. Really good feud against British Strong Style in the summer. Killed all of, killed all three of them. Let's not mention that. Murder, big old murder. Murder, murder, murder Trent Seven. Big old murder. Squ- squash Pete Dunne. And killed Tyler Bay with a close line. So, and two of those matches were matched with your contenders. He's very, he's very good at talking. Imperium became a thing in May. They all came together. He gave Alexander Wolf something to do. Um, continues to have a good match. He showed up on NXT in the premiere, which was an amazing moment. And That's now cool. he, he beat Kushida in a really good match in NXT. We don't talk about Survivor Series. Don't want to talk about that. Don't talk about it. And then we have Worlds Collide and Blackpool coming up, where we will finally see Imperium Bruce on Disputed Era. And I'm... And he's I'm... going to murder Joe Coffey. At Blackpool. I'm very mad about the Worlds Collide match. We all want it to happen, but I thought they were going to do, like, cha- like how they do Survivor Series, but just this. Because well, no. Adam Cole versus Walter in a singles match would be... Adam Cole would also die. Wait, Adam Cole would die. That's the point, though. Again. It would be a great match, though. Adam Cole's died a couple times uh, now. And speaking of... I'm not done. Well, I'm not done. Oh, but... sorry. My bad. Yeah. My, so, my apologies. I also go about Walter in the ring. He is... The best big man in all of wrestling. Let's be real. He does. He wrestles as a big man should. Because when you watch American crowds will watch American big man, they'll be like, "Boo!" Do a moonsault. It's like, no, he doesn't do that. Doesn't he, does, he does classic old. Although wrestling. when he did do the six one nine, that was the absolute scariest thing I've ever Terrifying. seen. Terrifying. He can do it really time. well. He can do it really well. Um, he's just captivating. He wrestles like a big man should. His in ring ability is also really good for his size. He can jump. He can leapfrog. He can do athletic things. And like for his body type, you wouldn't expect that because he's like a very like average you really, build. You really wouldn't. Because he's, he's not, like, ripped, but he's, like, he's, like, oh, he's in good shape. He's, like, the best shape in the world. But, like, you know, he looks good. He's, he can talk pretty well for being an for being Austrian. He, he has really good promos on NXT UK when they like the vignettes. He does indie dates also. He still works for, I think he works for Progress, WXW, and other indie promotions across the UK and Japan. He's working in Japan in the fall. And I think he's going to be UK champion for a long time. I don't think he'll lose it to, he'll either lose it to Jordan Devlin or Ilya Dragunov. He'll lose it to one of those two people. Yeah, Walter is my male superstar of the year. Uh, my match is to watch for Walter from 2019. First Tyler Bate, first Pete Dunne, first Kushida. Those are like three top matches from WWE this year. Uh, I'll go last. We'll go to All Eric. Right. Eric, I think, picked... Where is it? Here we are. It's Eric. Number two, up. number two, baby. He picked 
Le champion. Chris Jericho is Eric's male superstar of the that, year. That's not that thing. So um, Eric has explained it. He said, at the age of 49, Chris Jericho has been the top of the business all year. It seems every couple days there's a new headline of Jericho in it. From his work in New Japan at Wrestle Kingdom 13 against Naito, at Dominion against Okada, and the build to his match with Tanahashi to his incredible run as a world champion, Le Champion is proving that the gift of Jericho only gets better with age. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. He's like his fine wine. Yeah. Getting better with age. It's now, champagne. Now, let me talk about my male superstar of the year. All right. First of all, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hide anything. It's Adam Cole. Let's be real here. Bye bye. Uh, he led the NXT Revolution to being a big fucking deal. That's overall. Uh, the first man to defend the NXT title on SmackDown, to my knowledge, I could be mistaken. Apparently, there's some random like house shit, like dark match they did like a long time ago. Kevin Owens thing, but I don't know if it really counts. I don't count that because fuck it that. Count. I don't think it's even broadcast. Screw it. Um, he led NXT to doing the whole Survivor Series thing. He's had great match after great match. Uh, the Matt Riddle match when NXT went on USA. That was really good. Which, the greatest sequence ever where it was all back-to-back and Matt Riddle with what was the scariest uh, deadlift, deadlift German. That was terrifying. Which, I looked, when I first watched it, I was like, holy shit, that man could kick me in the face as hard as he could, and I'd apologize to him. <laughs> uh, Adam Cole, all three of his matches against Johnny Gargano were great. Um, his match with Finn Balor was awesome. It's He's just the male superstar of the year. He, he's He's... Helping NXT lead this revolution. Mm-hmm. So how are we doing this? Let's nail Eric, down. Let's, you know what? This is the so coin. We have, we have Jericho, Walter, Kofi, and Jesus. Yeah, we have four different people. How? Let's let's. How, how do we want to do this? Let's deliberate this. Is there four set to die anywhere? No. We, is there a D four? Uh, I do have a D four on. I me. have a D four. All right. So how do we want to do it? Um. I'll go even. Steve's pick two for Walter. Here. You'll pick two. I'll pick three. I will pick. We'll pick one for Jericho. Uh, wait, I have the least amount of wins. Never mind. Yeah. You want? You want four? All right. I'll get Boys. Four. Please. Get Let's four. see. It's out of a dice roll. Jericho. Dang right. it! Jericho, male superstar of the year. That's all Jericho right. Jericho gets it. The meme. The meme maker. The meme. The meme maker. The meme. Chris Jericho. Dang it. Also, Jericho, great match against Darby. That's true. The street fight was very good. I want Kofi at least in one of these. I want you. I want disease. you to shut the fuck up. Walter should have won that, but whatever. Um, so before we get to our last one, we're going to want a sponsor break. Tim, who we got today? All right, baby. You know what? I, I couldn't call on all of any of our previous sponsors, like Style with Purpose, our Steam Dream Store, tra- uh, really? Trans the College. Store. You know what? Not even going to talk about the store, because this episode, it's a special episode, it's brought to you by Steam Dream as a whole, baby. We got some great stuff coming in season four. It's going to be our fourth year of filming. Holy shit, I feel old. Same. Um, Time of this record, the day of this recording, I'm gonna try and drop the season four trailer, which is gonna be some upcoming videos, some upcoming mo- some podcast moments. Uh, I might include uh, Triple S in this as well, but you know what? Who knows exactly? Uh, I still have to edit it, but you know what? Look out for Steam Dream. It might be. It might. I might have to call it the end of an era because we're all graduating, which will be big sad. Hopefully, we can continue to after May. You guys are all leaving me, and I'm very sad. Well, I don't go here anymore. That right sucks. Here. But you know what? We're going to try to make these next uh, five months of season four be uh, pretty damn good. So YouTube.com slash Team Dream. Buy our stuff, but that's not the point of this. Uh, all right, that's it for me. It was real simple. Okay, uh, let's go to the final portion of the shooties. So we're going to start the first half off, well, the first last five off with the Best Stable Award. Uh, Schmidt, you go first. Schmidt, baby. Yeah, the, 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 the. yeah. Find it. Yeah, it's a good. That's good stable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's good stable. I like that one too. I like the big. I love that one. God, dude, Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Because <laughs> <laughs> Bill Enterprise is a love the Briscoes. Oh, Inner Circle. Yep. B. Because Inner Circle. B. B. Inner Circle. Because mm. Chris Jericho is one of my one of my favorite wrestlers nowadays. I used to hate him back in the day because he was heel and I was a little kid. He's good at his job. I didn't know what was he's good at what it does. Yeah, he's good at his job. Um, and I just love Chris Jericho. I love his gimmick, and I love everything. And I love a little bit of bubbly. So, a little bit good of bubbly. Good meme. I love uh, Sammy Guevara. I Spanish. Love oh, he's a Spanish, Spanish god. So god. sexy. Look at he him. He has a great vlog series on YouTube. He's fucking funny. But uh, yeah, uh, be the inner circle. Episode they should have called it the Disciples of Judas, but that's just me. It's a long day. Um, is, that, is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, me. Uh, I've gone from the disputed era because like. Just the year they had was incredible. They had a rough start. You know, they lost the belts to War Machine at Phoenix. But then they quickly rebounded when Cole won the title at 25. And then it slowly became more control. And the prophecy was fulfilled. It was fulfilled when Roddy... Well, then you had 
Kyle and Bobby beat the Street Profits on NXT in August. And then about a month later, Roddy beat Velveteen Dream, who we still haven't seen since then. Big old Hurtskies. Yeah, I hope he's back soon. Um, to win the North American title. And now they're, they dominate NXT. Sure, they lost at War Games, but they still have all the belts. You know, they're still doing well. Cole defends the title almost like all the time, too. And if I mentioned, they are pretty entertaining, too. They had that funny video package in June where they made like, the NXT intro of all of them in it, <laughs> which was funny. Um, they also have funny names they give people. They're entertaining. Cole is probably the I mean, Kyle's Kyle Kyle is also really good. They're really good matches. O'Reilly and Fisher are one of the best tag teams in the world. Adam Cole had one of the best years in all of wrestling. And Roddy puts on great match after great match. This is past NXT. We saw him versus Austin Theory, which was a fantastic match. It was a good match. We would recommend that. Austin Theory is going to be a really good addition to NXT when he's like there full time. But yeah, Undisputed Era, because they had a very good year. And Eric also picked them. So it's 2v2. Two, it's two two. Flip a coin. Oh, wait, flip. all right. What do you guys want? Heads, Undisputed. You want heads? That's okay, Tails never fails! Woo! Inner Circle beats him out. Be the Inner Circle. Be the Inner Circle. Inner Circle. Inner circle. Okay, next one. Uh, best promo slash best one on the mic. Uh, I'll go with Eric's first. I'll go with Eric, that's okay. I think Eric had Jericho? Let me see. I, I think he did. I think I because you were telling me. He, that. he said Chris Jericho. He didn't write why though, but I can see why. Did he pick a specific promo? No, he just said why. Well, I, I yeah, I why else that promo was written down in mind. Okay, but he said Jericho. I could see why though, because like Jericho has always been a good talker. Um, his vignettes with the hype matches are Man really good. Man does his thing. Yeah, he's also really good at talking live on air. He's funny. He has really good humor. He's also really good at, like adapting to crowds. I respect uh, him. When he first introduced Inner Circle, it was a really good promo. He but I didn't like when they mentioned we the people. Yeah, he we. That. The people. Um, yeah, Jericho is a good pick. That's Eric's pick. Um, Tim, you next. All right, uh, so my best on the mic is absolutely Cody, but best promo was when he added the stipulation onto full gear because here's my reason. He has such a passion when he talks, and the crowd is so invested in everything he's ever said. So he just I, – I don't know how he does it. I think it's just the Rhodes blood where he just has a way of getting the crowd to love him. Yeah. But that one promo where he's, he's like, good where he's like, if I can't be Jericho, I should never go for the world title. You know, it's it's just not my place. He delivered it so well. But yeah, Cody's the best on the mic, no question. Um, Schmidt. Schmidt, as nice. I said before, I'm gonna go with Kofi Kingston again. It's gonna be four different answers now. Yeah, oh, um, that's. Do you like Kofi Kingston? I love Kofi. Kingston. He's a good. He's a good talker. Um, oh, like the whole built mania was really good. The not bad. whole built mania was really good. My favorite promo was the one where he all not I wouldn't say buried Randall Keith Orton. Randall Keith Randall but, he flipped him off. Yeah, he flipped him off. That was funny. That was, good. That was funny. That was, no, 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 that was Samoa Joe, I'm a dummy. That was yeah. Samoa Joe. But um Electric like honorable mention. Yeah. Kofi Kingston absolutely I'm not gonna say buried Co- Randall King, Randall well, Keith Orton. He's doing okay now. Well, he got injured until then. But he pretty much said F you to Randall Keith Orton. Oh, yeah. And he said, you stopped me from getting this championship. Guess where I am now, and guess where you are. Sucking so a fat shut dick. shut the fuck up and suck a dick. Booyah. All right, uh, still. Go for Becky Lynch. Yeah. Um, honorable mentions go to Cody, MJF, Jericho, Dana Bryan, and Velveteen Dream. Um, so Becky had a very good year promo wise because she had – I have some ones written down. So her she has a lot of good highlights across, like, the year. Her – Post Rumble Raw promo against Ronda Rousey, and she picked her. The crowd was very, it's like Cody, they're very vested in that. She has a very good style of her promos where she is able to invest. You know, she, she puts a lot of heart into her, and you can see like more of the person instead of the character when she talks. Um, her backstage, like, sit down interviews have all been really good. The one with Shayna was very good, where she talked about Sasha, and the quote that really stuck up, and that was Sasha Banks is the greatest woman to never be great. And the thing about her promo is that she doesn't bury her opponents. Most heels like Brandy Rhodes like to bury their opponents and take unnecessary shots at them. Becky doesn't do that. She actually acknowledges how skilled her opponents are. So she approaches them in a way where she doesn't bury them. She puts them up in like a way they oh, this person can actually challenge them to give me a good match. Let's see what you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, she's very she's like Cody where she's very enthusiastic about what she does, which she's given like a good material because you know this, these are two different companies we're talking about. So she does a very good job. She's able to prop up opponents. She is a very good like natural talker. She can also be very enthusiastic. Her interviews are just in general really good. Some other like key like promos I think it's been she had a really good one when she went back to NXT. Talk about her time back there and what it was like for her and how different it's been. Her promo about Asuka and recently how she needs to fight her it shows this new other side of her where she like she is worried that she is not the same as she used to be. She's worried that might she might become a different person. She doesn't beat Asuka, so it gives more character to her as well. 
and showing that, oh, there might be more to her than what we already know about her. It goes back to her being different to Austin because she has something else going on with her. Which is fair. Mm-hmm. Which is fair. Um, um, what's one of the good ones she has? Uh, the, one, the, the whole thing with Shane already talked about was really good. Um, and then, oh, the, one, uh, the line she said to Stephanie where she said, I'm the glitch in your plan. Because, you know, corporate people. Love oh, that. yeah, I'm different to that because she's very anti-establishment. Love so yeah, cold. but, yeah. So, our one female representative against three other people. This is hard. Uh, this I'm is hard. I would flip between Becky and Cody. Yeah. I, I think that's a flip. It sucked because it, oh, I don't think I should add. Kofi, I so okay, imagine okay, out. okay. Here's another thing I'll mention about Becky. Imagine if she wasn't in WWE but in AEW or NWA. Imagine her promo was there. Yeah, because they would be yeah, they'd be great they'd too. Be even, they'd be even crazier because you know she'd be free because there'd, there'd be less writing involved. She has more freedom. So yeah, it's you know it's kind of tough considering Cody has more freedom than her, but still she makes it work. But Cody can make it work too, no yeah. matter what. Uh, I, it's, this is tough. I feel like, yeah, I would flip between Becky and Cody. Kofi's, Kofi Kingston's great. It was very good. Chris Jericho is always fun at just making things work. He'll, 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 I'll put the deep but Jer- Jericho, Jericho's a full year coming up, so he could probably, he'll probably easily win next year. Um, I'll go Tails. We'll go ta- ooh, all right, switching that. Tails never fails. Give me heads in a it's going to be. It's absolutely gonna be heads. <laughs> the one time you switch, you know what? <laughs> I'll give. Uh, I'll allow a tie if that's okay with you. I will allow a tie between. Rip the towel. Becky. Rip the towel. They'll both get. They'll both get half a towel. Uh, Becky can use it to probably whip Oscar because let's be real. And Cody. Or, or no, or in the bedroom with with Seth. <laughs> nice, good yeah. one. Because Seth is whipped. Um, and Cody can use it to probably throw at the audience because he throws a lot of shit. At he them. does. He throws his belt in the crowd all the time. Throws his belt. Tie he, between. Uh, he should have thrown his watch. That was a funny moment. <laughs> Remember, he threw his car keys on the mat. He, that was funny. Um, MJF should absolutely take in that car. And yeah, but no, no, what's an MJF? I, I don't think he has. He didn't have. He doesn't have good promos, but he's, he's, he's good, really he's great good, on the mic. He's good at them, but like yeah, his promos are very like you. I got the formula now. MJF is like very adapted to a room, which he's good at. He's very good at getting heat, but you know, once you see one, I feel like you see it all. Yeah. Which you know, it's not a bad thing. He's just you know, it's good. He makes it work, but you know, not the best. He'll get he'll get there one day. One of these days. Uh, uh, what's next? Um, final three. First one is pay per view of the year. Uh, I'll let Schmidt. Okay, I was gonna say you, but I picked Schmidt. Survivor Series because it, it was, was good. Yeah, I loved. I, it was the best WWE pay per view. I disagree. I thought it's except for Cardiff and all the NXT. Oh, for kind of NXT main though. roster. Main roster Survivor Series. Was it best, was the yeah. best Rumble. main roster pay per view. I say Rumble. Rumble was close. I think in terms of con- in terms of like it's overall just- and consistency, I'll agree that Survivor Series was great because it had. Becky Lynch versus it had all the NXT Women Championship, and it was the first year that NXT was involved in Survivor Series. That's true. Which was very good, and it made it interesting. We saw a lot of people that if you didn't watch NXT, you wouldn't have seen, and it made people want to go watch NXT a lot more. And it also highlighted some more, uh, some of the main roster talent as well. And overall, it was just a really good show. And I liked it a lot. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Some real good reasoning on that one. Yeah. Plus, I hate people see the positives in the ending because you know Becky putting Shane through a table, media match right there. Well, yeah, easy. I hate people see like, oh, she just buried her. I'm like, she no. just won. That's your main. That's your. That's your mania main event, right there. Yeah. Will be. Uh, what about Fiend? Nope. Ooh. No. Nope. Absolutely not. They're gonna Ooh. give it to it's Becky Shayna. I know. Yeah, it's gonna. What, be what, about, what about a big dog? No. Nope. What big dog? Big dog does not deserve a fuck another main event. All right, he's no, main event two. Dog, I'm worried he's actually, going. I'm worried he's actually going to. It's a, he's if a big sh- dog. Shut up, Cade Velasquez will be in the main event. Get out. If big <laughs> dog or Cade now. Velasquez wins the rumble, I am going to cry and riot. Anyway, um, Tim, go next. Uh, I'm gonna say double or nothing yeah. because it was the first yeah, AEW show, and this was kind of like their test. This is a safe one. This was like, hey. Uh, do you, this, do this people is, uh, like this, AEW? This, this is AEW. Yeah, here's John Moxley, by the way. He was like, here's John Moxley. You have Cody Dustin was awesome. You have match. Uh, the even the Casino Battle Royale where Hangman through injury made it. That was um, cool. It was it, dude. It was just great. Yeah, it was Alpha, surprise too. Alpha Omega two. Um, it's good. The L- Lucha Bros and the Bucky. One of the best tag matches of the year. Uh, not the best, but one not the best, but it was up there. One uh, it was just it was like the testing ground. Uh, it was like, hey, can AEW uh, is it up to snuff? And they did it. So you know what? A double or nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see what Eric's. I'm going to see what Eric had right now. Eric. Eric. Love Where is it. Right above uh, Finisher. Oh, that's that's like 13, I think. No, that's promo. Okay, Eric said take over New York. Which I'll allow. Yeah, that's a good one. Every match take over New York. This is his words. Had could have made him any other pay per view. Yeah. That's um, fair. Yeah. I'll so allow we that. had War Raiders, War Raiders versus Ricochet and Black, which we talked about earlier. Which I will Riddle versus Velveteen match. Dream was awesome for storytelling Great reasons. match. Great really match. Really fun. Um, Walter versus Pete Dunne, match of the year candidate. Uh, the Women's Four Way, underrated match, actually. Which was good. We really talked about that match. Um, and Gargano versus Cole, which we talked about earlier. It's just overall a good show. Had the feel good moment at the end. But yeah, it was a very good show. So, yeah. Um, and my last one, I'm going to go for Takeover Cardiff. 
Takeover Cardiff was fantastic. It was a great show. Um, the opener was probably the weakest match in the card, but that's because it was still, but it was still good. Don't get me wrong. Banks versus Dar was good, um, but the biggest, the, the, the surprise of the night was Cesaro against Ilya oh, Dragunov in a starving oh, performance for Dragunov. That was fantastic. Um, when I, so the second we saw Cesaro like cut back, says, "Oh, hits him and Ratsy." Oh, Cesaro, who's the answer to your challenge? He's like, "You know, I don't know." And then camera pans it's Ilya Dragunov. I'm like, "Yes!" I was so happy when that happened. And then we got a great match out of it. Um, and play. then. My opinion, the best tag match of the year, that three-way tag between Gallus, GYV, and uh, Flash Mob or South, South, Southern Wales subculture, amazing match for storytelling reasons and like the spots they did were amazing. And the hometown boys won. And the, and the false finishes were really well timed. The camera, the camera work was amazing too. Plus, yeah. Flash Mob was hitting a six thirty. Six thirty is always nice. And the fall, of pe- the fall of pieces at the end out of nowhere. It's like, oh, dude, it was super cool. Feel, the, only, the only good feel good moment on that show too. Uh... And then the main event, which we'll get to. Yeah. Ah, uh, so we have Cardiff, New York, Double or Nothing, and Survivor, Survivor Series. Series. This is tough. This is real tough. All, this, all, all disagreement. Four <sighs> good shows. I kind of want to. I'll give Takeover New York. Not gonna lie. All right, we'll ro- we'll roll with D four for this one. Uh, I um, will, I'll say. F- I'll take one. Four. Two. And then uh, Survivor Series New is New York is three. Yep. Oh yeah, boys. It four. It's three. Dang it. So that's New for, York. No, that was Survivor Series. Should you got, should you yeah. got one. I love it. You're like, dang it. Wait, no, I won. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? Each of the four were great. The die, the dice decided that Survivor Series is pay per view of the year. And the, it's my yeah. dice. So you know what? It, I'm it okay might be with. Waited. I'm allowed. I'm okay with that. Right. Sorry. Continue. Okay. Uh, second to last one. The match of the year. All right. Look. So, so I'm gonna start this because uh, fuck you guys. That's why. <laughs> uh, where is it? Um, hold on. No, you I'm gonna get it. it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it right here. Did I go past it again? Yeah. No, uh, no, I didn't. Match of the year. Match of the year. It's up here. Is yeah, right, it's right there. Oh, Screw you, Schmidt. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> say uh, Cole Gargano won at Takeover New York was absolutely match of the year. I saw live Cole Gargano too, and it was the really good. Life, and the crowd for that is amazing. But the two out of three falls, the against the world, against all odds, Gargano took out all of Undisputed Era at the time. And just, he did his thing. He had the feel-good moment. He broke kayfabe. It was a fantastic match. Call it round one. Okay. I'll go next. Um, Walter vs. Tyler Bate told an amazing story of David vs. Goliath. The whole, every time that Tyler Bate lifted Walter up, the crowd went insane. Went so it had pure the, bonkers. It had the crowd investment. They had the chance going on. Uh, Walter is a wanker was another chant that we didn't talk about. Walter is a wanker. Walter, Walter is, is a wanker. wanker. na 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 yeah. Always nah, great. Nah, nah, nah. Love that. And then we had Tyler Bates we talked about earlier. Um, we also had some brutal looking spots where Walter like dropped bait like on like his back of his head on the on the apron. That was That's, like straight jacket thing he did. Old, that was scary. Big old Rusky. And then when closing moments of the match when Tyler Bates kicked out at one, and I'm like, excuse me, dude. And Nigel freaked out on commentary. That was an amazing moment. And then Walter hits a close eye from hell. One, two, three, and just drained the air out of the entire arena. And we got that amazing closing shot of British Strong Style embracing in the ring. Just, it's amazing for storytelling. It's different It's different to Cole Gargano 1, but it's different because of storytelling reasons. It's not the flippiest match in the world. It doesn't no. have to be, though. But it doesn't have to be. It's a big old boy. Storytelling reasons are why that match is so good. And just, you know, and the crowd investment is another big reason why, because they were so into it. True. Uh, and it was so good. Um, we'll do Eric next. Eric! Eric, I think, had a tie between these two. I love this. So we're not going to count Eric in this case, then, because he had a tie. Eric is, uh, you know, we love him, but he's a dummy sometimes. Yeah. Um, yep, match of the year. So tie between the NXT, yep, between Colgar and 01 and TakeOver Cardiff made event. So, yeah, he doesn't count in this. So, yeah, he, um, this is hard. Um, he did give honorable mentions to Naito versus Ibushi from the G1 Supercard and Jay White versus Okada from that same show. And he also gave mention to Okada versus Osiris from day seven of the G1 Climax. We get so, it. You like New Japan. New Japan love getting in there. Also mentioned, I guess, mentioned to Osprey versus Shingo. Good mention to that as well from Best of Super Juniors. Uh, Schmidt. Um, I gotta go with Cole Gargano 1. It was just one of my favorite It's got a fucking point here. It, it's a, Tim, Tim has a point with all of it, so. Yeah. I'm glad that you saved yourself time and you saw things my way. So it's. Cole Gargano 1 match of the year, baby. Damn it. And, uh, I don't have a towel joke for that. I wish I did. But I don't. They can use their towels to whip each other. All right. You know what, Schmidt? I'll give you that. That wasn't bad. I think we have one more. Our last one is the overall superstar of the year. Uh, We'll start with Eric on this one. Eric. Eric's overall superstar of the year. It is a guy, but it's not Jericho. 
Keith Sater for Adam Cole. Bye bye. So yeah, Eric saved his pick for last, and that actually was kind of smart on him. Um, he said he consistently put on five star showing, show stealing matches, has been the top of NXT all year. Need further evidence? Look back at his look. Just look at November. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That's fair. Be Dana Bryan clean. Seth Rollins, you know, even though that was a DQ, he still won. He might have died at War Games, but he did show up the Survivor Series and beat Pete Dunne next night. So yeah, he's resilient. That's all he wrote. And honestly, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I'll yeah, he, that. he had a match of the year. I'll give him that. He had a match of the year. Has had good show with us all year. Has Undisputed Era. Yeah. Uh, Schmidt. Um, I picked Becky Lynch. Oh, shit. Is this, I think it's actually might be 3v1 now. Yeah. This is 3v1. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Eric. Because, I'm sorry, so sorry, sorry Eric. <laughs> she has, Eric had such a good case. Yeah. Eric had such a good case. Because she's had a great year overall. She has proved that she deserves the name of the man. And she has hit more than wrestling level. Which she's is literally much, Tim's reasoning. Yeah, Tim's reasoning. I'm... I'm stealing it. I'm glad you're stealing it anyway. We already talked about this in the, in the female category, too, how be, good she actually is. It's not bad. Because yeah. literally, I will mention the name Becky Lynch, and even my mother, who knows nothing about wrestling, knows who she is. That's kind of crazy, too, to think about that. Like, yeah. She, she, she would, you would know that, like, a year and a half ago. Yeah, like, I mentioned her name a year and a half. She's like, oh, some wrestler. And then I mentioned Becky Lynch, and she's like, oh, the man? And I'm like, wait, what? I'm Hold s- up, mother? Mainstream, <laughs> mainstream audience, Excuse everybody. Excuse me. Yeah, she's hit that. She's hit that more than wrestling level. Like yeah, she, guess, she's hit Rock. She's hit Cena. She's yeah. hit. Uh, let's go. I guess we'll look back at her journey. So at the start of the year, everyone was saying, "Oh, yeah, she's, she won't be. She won't be anywhere near the top of the picture at the end of the year." It's just all hype right now. She's the flavor of the month. Um, yeah, no, the fancy otherwise, because you know this wasn't a WWE force push. It was a fan thing. Because like, t- start twenty eighteen, you would have you you could have asked somebody the most underrated wrestler, they would have said her. Yeah. yeah. And then in the summertime, she got the she was getting she got the hot streak. It was fan investment. SummerSlam happens. Everyone's behind her. Charlotte wins. It's like, oh, okay. And mm, then the slap heard around the world happened, and here we are now. <laughs> Last woman standing match, but this that's 2018, so we can ignore that. Just We already talked about it earlier. Won the Rumble. Main event in Mania, which you know, not many people could say that. See what we about the match. You know, it was a, and I went in the crowd, too, and WWE backing him into a corner because it was late. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. It was it still was, a, it was, and it, Ronda being a dummy. Dumbass moment. Um, God damn. Um, but it was still, you know, it was respectful for what it was. It wasn't a bad match by any means. No. Um, but, you know, she's made, she makes good of what she had. Let's also mention, like, what she's been able to do with other people. So she helped introduce Lacey Evans to the, to the fans because no one knew who she was. She helped introduce her. Yeah. Kyrie Sane came up. She helped introduce people with, with her when she moved to Raw because not many people got to see Kyrie Sane that much when she was on SmackDown. The more people saw her on Raw, she had a great match with Kyrie Sane on Raw in October. Uh, Kabuki Warriors feud has helped elevate Kyrie Sane even more despite. The unfortunate injury, which Spike sucks. Boofed city. Yeah, which is that's that's that's. They do have a really good YouTube channel. They do. Oh uh, yeah, Kanachan. Kanachan yeah. TV. Shout out to Asuka. Um, she's she so she doesn't bury her opponents. She puts them over, as I talked about earlier, and she is genuinely one of the best total packages in all of wrestling. There aren't many of those around because people can be good in the ring but suck on the mic. Yeah. Or people can be good on the mic and be like eh, in the ring, whereas she is both of that. She doesn't get. I think she, I personally think she's underrated in the ring because people like to over like, oh, she doesn't do flips. I'm like, piss off. You don't need flips to be flips. good. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Matt and Nick Jackson, but that's just how it is sometimes. It'd be. Um, but yeah, so Becky Lynch for overall superstar of the year. It is tough because, you know, you have Adam Cole, you have John Moxley, not Kenny Omega this year, but not Jericho's Kenny. also around there. But you guys look at the complete year she's had to work with compared to some of the AW guys. And like, yeah. Adam Cole is definitely up there too, and so is Walter, but. Just sorry, Becky Lynch. Yeah, it was obvious. I'm sorry, Eric. <laughs> I wish sorry, you... Chief. But uh, yeah, I'm it's not. Three, gonna... It's three v one. I'm not so, gonna yeah. say anything um, else more. So I think we've already explained it all, especially earlier. So yeah, she. I think she won three awards today, then. And that is the conclusion my of the good total dudes shooty awards. Has been the shooties, but we have one last segment to cap things off. To, as we look ahead to 2020, it is new. Uh, time recording is December 30th, the day we record this song, and we'll do a sonicy to close things off for today. For what do we want to see in 2020? It's not what you think will happen. It's what, what do you want to see? happen. So what we want to see. Uh, who wants to go first? Mine. Uh, I'll let Schmidt go Everybody first. Everybody knows mine. It's that I hope I see my dad return to the ring. So I come I, from a mile away. Yeah, I, I hope he returns to the ring. I hope he faces like someone. It's been rum- It's rumored, but it's been rumored for so long that at this point I have no hope for it. But I'm hoping that in 2020, either it's in the Royal Rumble or something, I'm watching, hopefully over here, and I just hear cult of personality hit, and I'm just like, if that happens, and if I'm here, they will see me freak the F out. Yeah, I also remember we were watching All Out. Sam was 
kind of like the same way as Jung, where he wanted to see a monk come out at the end of the show, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Or that was a big thing. So, yeah. Um, Tim, anything you want to see? Um, I would love to see AEW partner more with people and I mean, just kind of just kind of grow. The rumor innuendos. Um, New Japan. I don't think it's gonna be New Japan. If anything, I think it's gonna be ROH because we know ROH they is need, dying. They need, they, need, they need to live, and they basically <laughs> might as well just funnel their talent to AEW. I would love to see Old AEW prediction. kind of figure out what demographic they want to go to Here's and prediction. just fix that. I think once you figure out who you want to advertise to and point that. I think they'll do great. So I want to. I want to see AEW partner more. Well, you see, what, if, what if they partner with the NWA? I I'd be fine with that. I think it's actually possible. They've been mentioning Cody a lot more in power recently. I mentioned Cody. I mean, you already have Nick Aldis. You have Marty. You have Marty's there. Mama's right Ranger Boy. Your Tim Storm. Yeah, but the women's division could actually use some more people over there. The too. women's division could use anyone. You need more tag teams since you know it's the Rock and Roll Express. Robert Gibson's eyes look two different ways. Yep. They need. There are a thousand. <laughs> they need the Bullet Club stable over on AEW somewhere. Well, I think that's coming because if Marty goes there, we're gonna get something out of that. I was gonna say, we, we have Inner Circle, you the leader like non existent. You have Butch and the Blade. Andy and the Williams bunny. is great. And the Bunny. Allie not as great. Andy Williams is great. Nightmare Collective is also bad, but it's a, it's good on paper. I think they just don't have the charisma for it. There's a lot of spooky. There's a lot of spooky things basically. Spooky dudes. Uh, Dark, uh, okay, what do we think of the Dark Order stuff? People didn't like that in Dynamite. Right? I, I, think, it did. I think it's not bad. I think it's I not. Liked it. It's not great. It's not bad. It could eh. be, it could, it could. It's very straight edge society, but better. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, I would admit it's, I, it's straight like the edge. Vi- the vignettes were cool. I ones. think they should push it a little more. I yeah. agree. I think um, they should make it not com- not comedic. They I'm, already I'm have a lot is. of comedy stuff. They do because the best friends. Yeah, and like a lot of. I stuff. think if they make it super serious and they really flesh out, like, all right, we're gonna take over the tag division because fuck you guys. I think it'll. I think it'll work. Um, let's see. What do I want to see in 2020? I want to see NWA get more love because I feel like it's not really talked about that That's much. That's not Jim Cornette related. Yeah, it could be, yeah, let's forget about that. that Fuck was, Jim Cornette. That made me sad. Um, I guess like in the other promotions, I want to see we're, – we're getting in period versus Undisputed Era. Um, we're, I want to see Rhea Ripley have a good dominant reign as NXT Women's Champion. I could probably see her holding it until SummerSlam weekend maybe. Um, I think she's going to probably face Dakota Kai first and then probably face Io Shirai in the summer. I think Io might win it then. But I guess my – big thing that I want to see, women's-wise, I want to see Tessa Blanchard go back to WWE. I think she'd be better than an AEW. Right. That's my opinion. Because I'm worried, because I think Brandi Rhodes might get too mad with power and make herself the focus point of the women's division. Cause I, that's, that's, Which is dumb. It's, it's not good, because he's not good. But she's almost in every segment the women are in. Let's be real. Even though, isn't she not booking that? No. I think it's her. Because Kenny, Kenny Kenny's Kenny, It's like her and Kenny working on it. Because Kenny books it. Yeah, and we haven't, seen, we haven't seen Riho until like the until during, homecoming until this week, which we will see live from Daly's place. Um, other stuff I want to see, I like to see Alistair Black become win some kind of championship over in New Japan. I want to see Will Ospreay go to the heavyweight division and maybe maybe win the IWGP heavyweight title at some point. Probably not 2020, but eventually he still has uh, his or, or G1. Oh yeah, he could. Win, he might be a front runner to win the G1. Him, I guess like early G1 people are like him, Ishii, Shingo, maybe Ibushi. He just won, no, though. he just won. Yeah. I don't get Okada will win it. Switchblade. Yeah, no. Actually, actually, I could see it. It's actually possible. I could see Switchblade. He actually, I feel like he'd be really good at holding that title. Well, holding the brief. It's a briefcase. They, I, really, they yeah. use a briefcase. Money in the bank. Um, well, let's, let's see. Uh, mania wise, ooh, it should be a mania. Ooh, actually, another one for me. Uh, I want Mustafa Ali to be a big deal. Yeah, Mustafa he, Ali he deserves. Has, he, has, he has the skills. Mustafa Ali should absolutely win the next Money in the Bank. He, he has, should he do it. He almost did. Because he, cause he was supposed to. And then Brock. He was absolutely supposed to. And then they were like, okay, yeah, no. change of plans. All right, Brock Lesnar. But like, before Brock Lesnar, the plan was for Mustafa Ali to win, and he was supposed to cash in on whoever was WWE champion. I think Which it was, would have been Kofi. I think he was supposed to cash in on Kofi. That's cr- That wow. was supposed to be the plan. That's crazy. But Brock came for, back. But then Brock decided to Brock party, but that was pretty much it. Brock party I, was funny. It but was no, funny Mustafa Ali out. deserved the title this year. I agree. And uh, Shorty G should die. Chad Gable. He's, he's a great wrestler. Stop calling him Shorty G. It's, it's his, dumb. His name is Chad Gable. It's bad. Killing. His name is Chad Gable. His name is Chadathan Q. Gable. You kill if I see if I hear Shorty G one more time, I'm not gonna. Um, Luchasaurus should be AW champion in 2020. 100 percent Luchasaurus should win the AW championship. I think he should win the tag titles. Yeah, they'll probably do that first. I think it, it should be him and Baby Saurus as tag champs. Baby Saurus. And Jungle Boy goes to the mid card. Yep, I can see that. He'll build them up because he's still he's really Jungle young. Boy is great. It's he, it's but it needs to be Luchasaurus and Baby Saurus. Uh, I want to see, oh, Blue Brothers should go into singles action and 
be crazy because they're really good at single stuff as well. Um, Which Penta would go world title and Phoenix would stay mid card. Or do triple A's to go for that or triple A title because he was champion until Kenny beat him for it. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, they could do a defense. They could do a title defense because Kenny is still champion right they now. Do this. Um, I want to see Hank. Well, I want to see. Yeah, I said Hangman become a become a sad mad cowboy and be evil. Sad mad cowboy. Yep, they'll do that. Hangman um, absolutely will get a uh, title mm-hmm. this year. Yo Shirai should win the NXT but Championship at some point, maybe yep. towards the end of the year. Um, I already said that. Uh, imp- what should happen at Impact? Um, Ty- oh, Ty I think, Ty- I think uh, Ty will leave. I think Tessa should win she'll at win, she'll Slammiversary. Win it. No, I think it's one night only Impact returns. Oh, yeah, the Mania weekend. Mania, if that's, that's a big time to do it. Yep. Mania weekend's a big time I think to Tessa do it. Will, she, it'll be like Gargano. She won't hold it long, but she'll hold it. She'll hold it until her contract runs out. And then she'll, just... she'll hold it for like a month or two because that's all she needs to it. Well, because um, when, when she was, what else was she done? She can't do anything else, really, aside from defend it, which I think she'll lose it to... Sam McCallahan again. <laughs> I think she I think she wins it, and they have, like, a rubber match, and Sam McCallahan is a two champion. Then she figures out what she's going to do next, because her contract is up in the summer. Um, I'm what trying else? to think about... Uh, NWA I think it. they should, and this is a bold thought, I think they should break up Rich Swan and Willie Mack. I, 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 think, I, th- I think that might happen at... Um, Hard to Hard, kill? I think it might happen. It probably will. Because it this might. is their fourth straight pay-per-view where they're going for the tag titles. I think so. And the North has held it for so long. Well, if they, they don't win it... I don't uh, know if you saw it on Impact, but Willie Mack was injured in the match they won for the tag team open, and it looked like he was like not in it at all, and Swan won for the team. So there might be something... I like think there. Willie Mack should turn heel. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Better than RVD on Rhino. That was but bad. that we don't talk that was about. Bad. Um, now he's gonna die. Now Arby's gonna die. I think. Uh, I think Moose should be a bigger deal. Yeah, because he's really fucking. Because really Moose funny. is Moose is still. He's, he's on funny. this legend killer path. I think he just needs to really. He needs. To I love his current game. He made he's a big the greatest deal. Sports athlete of all time. He's like doing all these funny fu- vignettes. He's great in the ring. He's funny. He made Ken Shamrock look good. That's, That's hard. hard. He's because he's old. Ken Shamrock is old. He's, he's a, a thousand. Um, like Doctor, like the Rock and Roll Express. Jordan Grace should win. Hard to kill, but we'll get to that another week. Ty Valkyrie will go to WWE. Ty Valkyrie will go to we'll join Raw, probably. Somewhere. She, um, she's good either way. Let's see. NWA, you think Aldis will hold the title throughout the year? Aldis, not. Uh, he should hold it for most of 2020, but he should lose he just, it. He, just, he did just turn heel. He should hold it for. I would say he loses Summer. around fall. Summer, fall. To, what are who? Not Marty. It's got to be somebody new. Um, if the AW partnership happens, Cody might come back to NWA. Honestly, if it's someone from the current NWA roster... Ricky Starks? No. 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 Ricky Starks should be Aaron Stevens at yeah. some point. Or TV title. Uh, so this is tough, because there's not really main event guys on NWA. The question mark. No. <laughs> no. No. Uh, question funny. mark, if anything, should win the TV title. He's probably going to. Um, Stu Bennett. Yeah? Honestly, I could see Stu Bennett winning. That'd be awesome. Stu Bennett comes out of retirement, because the dude is... Ripped. He's, he's really, got he's in a really bull good hammer shape. left in him. He's in such good shape. He looks fantastic. Who on that roster? Let's see. Col- no Col- Cabana, a- maybe? No. no. Col- is not main event. That's fair. Oh, I'm trying to think. James Storm already lost. James Storm, I thought, would should win. Like If James Storm goes maybe for it later. again. Maybe try it again. Tim Storm, maybe Tim Storm tries again. I would be fine with that. One, la- one last run for Tim Storm? One last one last run, and then from, he could drop to whoever. One last run. And well, then Tim Storm was like, I'm good. Bye, guys. Go my mama. Then we never see him again. He'll be sad. That's it. He'll be real sad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right That's all I can think of right set. now. That's all I can um, think of. I guess UK, NXT UK-wise, Walter to hold the title the whole year. Walter will not lose that title this year. I don't uh, think he should. I don't think he should. If anyone should be. Devlin or Dragunov. Uh, I don't think Dragunov should win. That's amazing. I think Dragunov should win the, the mid-card title once that debuts, which will probably be the European title. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jordan Devlin's a good pick. Um, not coffee. Maybe Tyler Bay again. Depends what they want to do with him. I feel, I, he might go NXT US with Trent and Pete, though. That's fair. Because Pete's already US. It, that's, it, it all depends on if he beats they could, they could put Trent and Tyler in the tag division in NXT. They, they really need tag teams right now. They do. Plus, that's with the, the, plus, Dusty with the Dusty Classic Classic coming, coming up. up. We might see them again there. Uh, Did they yeah, announce the a team spot yet? No, Dusty that's going to happen, I think, this week or next week. Not. I was going to say, this week is the, like the, the wrap-up. Like it's the wrap their up. award show. Yeah, so I think the eighth they'll probably, which I'm fine with. But yeah, Tyler Bates deserves something. Yeah, I feel like he should have a big year. He's like 24. Three or four? It's 24. Which is crazy. He does like 26. He's a big old young boy. Big uh, young boy. But yeah, that's 2020. Yeah, it's 2020. We'll have more to talk about. So next time we're here, we're going to be talking about take over Blackpool. Hard to kill. Hard to kill. Other stuff happening. We'll go back to our usual format of our news and everything, whatever other segments we think of. But for now. We're going to close the doors on 2019. Doors are going to be shut until January 
where we will come back and talk about all those other things. We'll have a whole year ahead of us. And yeah, we'll probably have some new segments for you. Maybe some more debates. Maybe some classic pay-per-view reviews. Those will, be, those, will, those will not be live streamed. Those will be on YouTube. But we'll, we'll figure out when we get there. Uh, Stell, do you have anything to plug? Um, follow me on Twitter at Stell Shoots, all one word. Um, I'm also on Instagram at Stellios SSB, under, well, underscore between my name and SSB. Uh, if you're going to Genesis 7, if you play Melee or any other kind of eSport game that will smash, I'll be there. Come say hi. I might be wearing some kind of wrestling merch. It might be cool for people to watch the pay-per-views that weekend for in my room because I'll probably be doing something about those. But, yeah, that's all I have for me. Uh, Tim, anything to plug? Uh, follow me on uh, Instagram at IMTLS. Uh, subscribe to us at uh, youth.com slash Steam Dream. Buy our stuff, teespring.com slash store slash Steam Dream. For any listeners from Nashville, Tennessee, January 13th through the 16th, catch your boy in Nashville, Tennessee. Come say hi. Uh, don't come to my hotel because that would be weird and gross. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, be sure to stay steamy through all of 2020. Schmidt, do you have anything to plug while you're here? Um, follow me on Twitter at Impulse. 754 and please subscribe to me on youtube at impulse 753 i just uploaded a new video it's kind of bad but that's beside the point you tried it that's you tried your best that's all that matters it is a vlog of naka 2019 you said knack and i'm like knack too no naka in connecticut Nakamura? No. Nak- nakazawa no <laughs> all right you tried our best wrap it up baby all right we'll see you all in 2020 thank you for listening thank you for listening uh thank Bye. you for a good 2019 and goodbye lars Sullivan, new gay porn